Hi everyone, I'm Andrea, but people here call me Fei Fei. Please like and subscribe! My life was extra special, because I had two home countries. Even though I was born in China, during our trip to America when I was seven, I got lost from my family. At first, I was really scared and lonely, but the more time I spent in the orphanage, the stronger and more independent I became. It seemed like this place was filled with my greatest childhood memories. Life went on just fine, until I was 15. A miracle happened. Fei Fei! Daddy finally found you! I didn't fully understand how, but tears started streaming down my face. Dad didn't change one bit, but my mom had passed away. So I was introduced to my stepmom, Mei. Our family's finally reunited! Let's get back to China! I sadly waved my friends goodbye and returned to my home country. We, the Li family, came from a long line of pottery makers. And this is the fifth generation! Dad said that before his grandparents took their last breath, their dying wish was to preserve the family craft. And as the only granddaughter of the family, I carried the noble responsibility of inheriting this pottery shop. I believe in you! Make us proud! While I was still processing everything, my parents already dragged me to my relative's house for a meet and greet. There must have been 20 people here, and I had to memorize all their names? Grandpa Zhu, Grandma Lian, Uncle Tang, and Aunt... Aunt Hua? Luckily, I still remembered some simple phrases from my childhood and greeted them with my broken Chinese. Then, I heard them talking about a robbery at my house a couple days ago. Dad got a big order to polish 12 vases for the Ming Dynasty, but they were nowhere to be found all of a sudden. The customer wanted to press charges, causing a big trouble for our family. The police were involved, but since all cameras were smashed, it was impossible to find the culprit. The detective in me was woken up, so I ran to where my aunts were to eavesdrop. But before I could ask anything, Dad came and dragged me away. It's none of your business, kiddo. Even if the police couldn't solve it yet, focus on learning the trade. A few days later, I started school. And boy, I thought I was smart, but Chinese characters defeated me. For crying out loud, those dancing letters and accents gave me a nightmare. And I was even reprimanded for using English in class. That's not all. Classes were followed immediately by ceramic lessons. Watching ceramic tutorials was fun, but practicing was a hard slap of reality. The more I practiced throwing clay, the more stupid shapes I created. Ugh, and there's clay all over my face and shirt. Clumsy me. Frustrated, I angrily yeeted a piece of clay across the room, then saw Dad glaring at me with his face darkened. Fei Fei just came here. She can't possibly learn that quickly. Give her some time. But Dad coldly dragged me to the ceramic gallery. You know, pottery is about pouring souls into lifeless clay. Your great-grandfather used to make ceramics for the palace during the Qing Dynasty. In wartime, the whole workshop was bombed, but your great-grandparents saved the most precious vases while fleeing the enemy till they died. Dad's words made me realize how hasty and incompetent I was. I had to change! Then Dad introduced me to a guy. This is Cody, my best apprentice, aka Pottery Prodigy. He'll be your teacher. Cody's American, so communication was much easier. He's a great teacher who would always patiently fix my work to perfection, despite how many times I messed up. Cody's also friendly and easy to talk to. Some days our deep talks lasted until dawn. One time, while I was preparing the kiln, I accidentally found this half-burnt piece of paper in the corner. It looked not so normal because there was some handwriting that seemed important on it. I showed Cody and he said it could be a Chinese poem, but I couldn't figure out its meaning since most of it was lost. Dad said it was nonsense while my stepmom shook her head in confusion, but it somehow still bothered me, so I kept studying it for a few nights, and I might have found a clue that could lead to the mysterious missing 12 phases! But that wasn't enough, so I decided to put it aside for now. Back to my daily routine, I was showered in my neighbor's and relatives' care. A bit too much. They always urged me to get married. When I was your age, I had two children already! <laughs> but I'm not even 18 yet! Worse, they even sent some suitors to my house. I've got a gift for you for our first meeting. This chicken lays a lot of eggs. If you marry me, your life will be full of roses. I only have one small request. My family wants many children, so we'll need to have five sons, three daughters, and a pair of twins. They got me dizzy, so I sneaked out the back door to avoid running into another lunatic. <sighs> the countryside sunset looked so peaceful. Arr! Wow, didn't expect such strong pipes from a tiny body. Creepy much? I turned to leave, but suddenly that guy grabbed my ponytail and pulled out my hair tie. I was gonna teach this jerk a lesson, but he somehow dodged every blow. Stand still so I could hit you. Give me a kiss, then I'll give it back. You wish? What a psycho. 
But somehow, now I and this psycho became friends, and we even got closer and closer after seeing each other every day at school. I realized Kai wasn't as annoying as I thought, and even grew sympathy for him when I learned that he also lost his mother when he was little. As his father was busy running his business, Kai was always unhappy and lonely. Now that he had my company, he cheered me up whenever I was sad and frustrated about not getting better at pottery. However, Cody didn't seem too pleased with this. He appeared out of nowhere and dragged me away. Faye, that guy is a notorious lady killer. Stay away from him. He seems like just a regular dude to me. Okay, to tell you the truth, that guy is from the Wen family, our lifelong nemesis. If your dad knew about this, you're done. I'm a bit concerned, but life isn't a revenge drama. No one can stop me from seeing someone because of some familial feud. Still, I guess I should be careful. Hey, hey, what you hiding? Faye likes a free spirit. A boring guy only plays with clay all day. <clears throat> no chance. Well, I think an innocent girl like Faye needs a calm, mature, and collected guy. Not some free-spirited, spoiled rich boy who only knows how to spend his parents' money. Ah! Every time this happened, I had to throw myself in between them and push them apart. One day, my stepmom caught me coming home after going out with Kai. I panicked and didn't know how to explain, but... Don't worry. Your secret's safe with me. You're stressed out enough. Then she called me in for a deep talk. She apologized for not giving me enough care and kindly asked if I had any difficulties since returning home. Hmm. Actually, I like pottery, but I haven't improved no matter how hard I worked. The responsibility on my shoulders is so big that it pulls me down. I tried to put up a smile, but there were times that I felt suffocated. Don't push yourself too hard. If it's all too much, take a break and go back to America for a while. A healthy mind comes first and foremost. <sighs> I'm so lucky to have an understanding stepmother. As soon as she left, Cody stepped out. I didn't know you were under so much pressure. Don't worry, there are other ways to help your family besides making good pottery. You're smart. I know you can do it. So, I started to practice performing tricks with ceramic faces, then set up a TikTok account to upload videos of my performances. They went viral in only a few weeks, gathering millions of views and propelled the pottery shop to fame. And with that, the number of orders grew rapidly. The national pottery competition was coming. My dad excitedly announced that it was a huge opportunity for our family. Our core team worked day and night to create a unique design that would make an impact. The big day finally arrived and I was tasked with carrying the vase to the exhibition area. I was so excited to be there, but a stranger suddenly bumped into me, leaving me in shock for a few seconds. Oh my god, the vase! Panicked, I hurriedly checked and luckily, it's okay. Whew, that was close. The competition officially began. I checked out the other displays. They all looked splendid, but the Wen's family vase literally shocked me to my core. It looked exactly like ours. I went straight there to confront them. This is clearly my family's design. You, you shameless thieves. Watch your mouth, little girl. And you, keep an eye on your daughter. Don't let her bring shame to your family. Don't tell me how to raise my child. And the vase? The thief will soon be exposed. Come on, Faye. I knew the design can be copied, but not the material. It's made with our family's secret technique. We had a special substance that made ceramics more durable. Now we just need a little luck. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner impressed us with its one-of-a-kind design and outstanding quality. The first prize goes to... Wen Family! However, we also found out one team's product is made with substandard material and underfired. The judges also suspect them of plagiarizing the Wen's design. We can't accept such disrespect to the craft. Lee family, you're disqualified from this competition. Before we could recover from the shock, the news already spread like wildfire. Kai tried to explain that he had nothing to do with this, but I didn't want anything to do with him anymore. The Wen family must have made a copy of our vase and swapped it with ours. But when? It's with me the whole time. It could only be... Our business took a nosedive. Orders were cancelled, most staff quit, and worse still, everyone here suspected that I swapped the vases since some of them saw me with Kai. My dad didn't take that news so well. He had a stroke and was hospitalized ASAP. No, I had to find out the truth, no matter what. Only three people knew the design. Dad, Cody, and me. Right, Cody would know what to do now. Unfortunately, he took some days off to take care of his sick mom, so I decided to come to him again. He'd gone shopping, so his mom welcomed me. Thank you for giving my son a chance and paying him handsomely. Without the money, I might not even be here anymore. <coughs> money? What money? Ah, uh, my son spent sleepless nights for months to complete your vase. Isn't that why you paid him that well? What? We'd never made Cody work overtime. What money is she talking about? 
Right then, Cody got home. I immediately confronted him. He denied everything at first, but then he had to give in. Who hired you? Really, I don't know. They texted me from a blocked number, then wire transferred me the money. Faye, my mom's really sick and I had no choice. I never expect such terrible consequences. I'm so sorry, Fei Fei. I ran away ASAP. I can't hear another word. The saddest thing about betrayal is that it never comes from your enemy. When I got home, my stepmom was cooking. Oh my, you look pale. Poor sweetie. I couldn't help but leaped into her arms and burst into tears. She tried to calm me down before bringing dad his food. I know I cannot be weak anymore. I'll find out who's behind all this. Whatever it takes. I rummaged through the workshop until late, only to find nothing. Exhausted, I went to sit by the gate for some fresh air and suddenly saw something in the bush. An envelope. Looks fishy. To not leave any trace, I opened it with steam instead of tearing. It's a Chinese poem and had the same style as the one I found the other day. By reading the first letter in each line, I got this message. Yo, Chang. Jin, Mian, meet at the oil factory, it is. The message coded in the other poem also referred to a place. It's gotta be a sketchy meeting to have its spot written in code like that. I quickly put the letter back and searched for the only oil factory in town, then followed the address to an abandoned factory. I ran straight inside, but it was totally empty. Was I wrong? I felt defeated and was about to leave when I suddenly heard a voice from the second floor. I crept up and saw Kai's father with a gang wearing black and our 12 stolen vases. Right then, a hand patted on my shoulder. Whatcha doing? I turned around to see a creepy face, then pitch black. I opened my eyes with a splitting headache and my hands all tied up. Who's this? My stepmother, who's arm in arm with Kai's father? Already awake? You, you're on their side? My father didn't mistreat you. This is how you return the favor? I've had enough of your old man. A tyrant and self-proclaimed smart man. I deserve someone who loves and pampers me, like Mr. Wen here. If your father had been truly smart, he would have realized long ago that he had nurtured a serpent in his bosom. That Cody boy. <laughs> Just wait and see. I will expose your scheming. Ha! In your dream! I already bought a plane ticket back to America. Be prepared to be welcomed by another orphanage. I even wrote your old man a touching welfare letter. He'll definitely have another stroke once he reads it. <laughs> the secret letter has exposed you, and other evidence will soon be found. You can't get away with this. Do you mean this, feisty girl? In fact, what letter? <laughs> Just then, the wind blew and swept the burning letter to some old oil containers at the corner, setting it aflame. The fire spread with lightning speed. They all ran for their lives, leaving me behind. The smoke was thick, stinging my eyes. <coughs> I was about to faint when... Cody kicked the door open, dashed in, and untied me, while Kai covered me with his jacket. You? You? There's no time. Run! Then quickly carried me away from the fire. When we got to safety, the entire factory exploded. Okay, can you two explain everything now? I... I felt guilty about the pottery competition, so I secretly followed my father to find out the truth for you. I came to your house to apologize, but saw you rushing somewhere looking worried. That's why I decided to follow you, and I can't believe that the person hiring me is your stepmother. Me neither. Anyway, thanks. But I'm still mad at you. Are, Are you, you okay, okay now? now? I'm fine. I'm not sure about them, though. Animators, please replay the previous scene. Yep, I managed to record everything. With this priceless evidence, of course my so-called stepmother and Wen had to plead guilty and go to prison. My father was discharged from the hospital, and our 12 ceramic vases were returned. Now that our family's name's cleared, business is booming. After this incident, I learned to cherish our pottery workshop more. Determined to continue my family business, I started learning pottery properly to prepare for next year's competition. Root for me, peeps. And, of course, I still have these two guys by my side. Only, it looks like they no longer want to just be friends with me. What should I do? Please help me by commenting down below if you're hashtag Team Kai or hashtag Team Cody. Hi, guys. It's me, Claire. So, tomorrow is going to be super exciting. I'm putting my life in your hands. Literally, as I'm going to be doing a My Instagram Followers Control My Day video. Yay! 
Most influencers do this with options, but I trust you guys, so go wild! Just visit my Instagram, like this video, and comment on whatever you want me to do tomorrow. The comments with the most likes will be chosen, and don't forget to follow me to stay updated! As you can see, I'm Claire, and I'm a beauty influencer on Instagram. Of course, with this pretty face and eye for style, I already have loads of followers. But for someone who was born to be famous like me, that's not enough. That's why I'm doing this viral challenge. It'll get me tens of thousands of likes. Okay, that's it for today. Now I better get my beauty sleep. Gotta have glowing skin tomorrow. The first thing to do in the morning was to check my Instagram. 20,000 likes from my post last night. That's average. Let's see. I asked my followers to decide what I should wear and what I should eat for breakfast. And the most liked comments were about Y2K style and avocado toast. My favorite dish anyway. Easy peasy. I called the maid to prepare breakfast while I did my skincare routine. Then I made sure I took a cute selfie and uploaded it to my story. What a good start. Am I the cutest girl on earth or what? Okay, now I have to make a very difficult decision. Which bag best complements my outfit? This one or this one? I was still trying to decide when my phone rang. Ugh, that's Liam, my boyfriend. It's so early, yet he's already sent me a ton of messages. What are you doing? Why didn't you reply to any of my texts? Hurry up if you don't want to be late for school. All right, all right, I'm coming. Jeez, why does he have to be so stressy? It doesn't matter if we're a little late. I mean, come on, it's only school. After choosing the right bag, I got into Liam's car. He frowned at me and asked me what took so long. I was busy taking selfies. I replied and posted a mirror selfie I took earlier on my Instagram with the caption, Y2K style for today. What should I do at school this morning? At break time, I was sitting in the cafeteria with Liam and my bestie, Tori. As usual, my beauty was attracting attention. All eyes were on me, and one guy even gushed out, You're so pretty, Claire. <laughs> I checked my Instagram to see how my newly posted pic was doing. Oh, it already had 50,000 likes. That's good, but I know with my charisma, I can do even better. But, huh? What's this? The most liked comment on the post wants me to go to the school library and scream, I hate studying and the library is the most boring place on earth. What kind of request is this? Don't do it. I don't have a good feeling about this. It could be from someone who's trying to sabotage you. Liam has a point. This could just be a trick that Isabella, my rival at school, devised to embarrass me. She's also an influencer on Instagram, but she just copies everything I do. Her Instagram is 5,000 followers less than mine. Yawn. But Claire, how are you going to explain to your followers if you bail out? I don't think they'd be happy about it. Hmm, right. I'm doing a challenge, aren't I? Can't stop after only two comments, especially because one from anti-fan. Besides, this is no big deal, right? Who even goes to the library anymore? So, I dragged Liam and Tori to the library. As you know, I need them to film me. Huh? Why was it so ridiculously busy in here? Since when did people actually want to study? I needed to get this over with. So breaking through the silence, I shouted, I hate studying, and the library is the most boring place on earth. All eyes instantly fell on me and I heard tuts and grunts. Then someone said, What the hell are you doing? Ugh, why is everyone in here so serious? I just shrugged and walked away. At least Liam and Tori had captured me at my best angle. To my surprise, that video gained me a load of views and likes, and I even earned nearly 1,000 more followers. Who would have thought that such a silly act would get so popular? At that moment, Isabella walked past me. Only brainless people would scream in the library. Huh, look who's jealous now. Hey, you might as well try that. Maybe you'll get half of my followers. Isabella looks like she's about to explode with anger. <laughs> but then she sneered and said, 
Let's see if you're still laughing after you see what you've got to do next. Huh? What is she on about? I immediately opened my Insta to check. What? The top comment this time was from Isabella. She wants me to put a trash bag on my head and go to the mall. Ew, trash bag? I spent an hour styling my hair this morning. Isabella, you wicked witch. But okay, if she wants to play, I'll prove to her that she's messing with the wrong person. Just like last time, Liam tried to talk me out of it. This is nonsense, Claire. Don't lower yourself to this level just for a few likes. I told him he was overreacting, and that I wasn't going to let my followers down by bottling out of it. This seemed to annoy him, and he stormed off. Um, so who's going to take videos for me? I called out, but Liam just kept walking. Why can't he just support me like usual? Luckily, I still had Tori, and she agreed to film it for me. That's what best friends are for. Okay, this is more embarrassing than I thought. People keep staring at me like I'm an alien. I gave them a what-are-you-looking-at stare, prompting them to quickly turn away. No, I have to act confidently for the video to get more likes. Looking over, I saw Tori cheering me on, so I took a deep breath, stood up straight, and did my best catwalk strut through the mall. My heart was pounding like crazy, even after we walked out of the mall. Phew, it was finally over. I then quickly opened up my Insta, uploaded the video I just shot, then texted Liam asking where he was. After that, Tori and I got in a taxi to his house. Liam was already waiting for me at the door, looking all serious when I got there. So I told Tori to wait in the taxi. Then angrily I shouted as I walked over to him, You could have at least come and supported me. Do you know how upset I was when you just left like that? I wasn't comfortable filming you make a fool of yourself. I care about you too much. It's just a bit of harmless fun. Why can't you understand how important being an influencer is to me? <sighs> I don't think I can be with someone who doesn't support me and my passion anymore. We should break up. Then I just walked away, not giving Liam a chance to explain. He quickly ran over and grabbed my hand. Okay, I'm sorry. Can we talk it out? <laughs> it worked! I gestured to Tori, then turned around with a big smile at Liam. Can you believe the followers want me to test your love by pretending to break up with you? I'll show them how much you love me. But then, unexpectedly, Liam angrily shouted, What? So, I'm just another tool to get likes for your Instagram? If you want to break up, then fine, we're done. Then he stormed into his house and slammed the door. I stood there open-mouthed. How could he break up with me? In the whole two years we've been together, I've never seen him this mad. I'll let him chill for a bit and talk to him tomorrow. He'll have calmed down by then. Right? Look, Claire! Your shopping mall video has already reached 100,000 likes! Oh my god, what is this? People are going crazy for my videos. They say I'm so confident, wearing a trash bag and still looking stylish, I look like Kendall Jenner. And my followers also increased by 5,000 people. At least this is worth the effort I put in. The next morning, I waited for Liam to pick me up. But he never arrived. When I got to school, I tracked him down and asked if he was still mad at me. You're so addicted to social media. I don't even know who you are anymore. Then he walked off. At that exact moment, Isabella walked towards me. Wait, why is Tori with her? Hey, loser, you're in so much trouble. What does that mean? I looked at Tori in confusion, but she just lowered her head and quickly followed Isabella. Feeling something was wrong, I immediately opened Instagram and... Oh my god. What are these comments? Such an attention seeker. She's willing to do anything just for some likes. I heard that her boyfriend broke up with her. No surprises there. <laughs> what is this? I did all these things at their requests, and now I'm the one receiving all the hate? 
Suddenly, the principal announced via the loudspeaker that I had to go to his office. As I walked in, I saw my parents sitting there. Turns out news of what I did at the library had spread. But not only that, someone even accused me of stealing from the shopping mall. Huh? I didn't steal anything. To prove my innocence, I gave the principal my bag to check. And he pulled out a brand new necklace. Why is this thing in my bag? I tried explaining myself, but no one would listen. I was suspended for a week. The walk out of the principal's office was the worst thing ever. Everyone was giving me judging looks and whispering to each other. On the way home, I took a teary selfie and posted it on Instagram with the caption, Consequences of yesterday's challenge. One week suspension. Someone put the blame on me. Once home, my ashamed-looking parents immediately took my phone away and even disconnected the Wi-Fi. Ugh! My life was over! I ran up to my room in a huff and flopped down onto my bed. Suddenly, my eyes crossed a photo I took with Liam on my birthday last year. That's when Liam threw me a surprise party, and he even made me a cute birthday cake. Come to think of it, I was a bit too harsh with him yesterday. He was only trying to protect me. If I'd listened to him, I wouldn't have all these hate comments and be stuck home for a week. I hurt Liam just to gain more followers. How could I be so stupid? I wished I could apologize to him right now, but... <sighs> then to my surprise, after just three days, my mom told me I was allowed back to school. There were still mutters about me, but that didn't matter as Liam was waiting for me at my locker. I hurried over to him, apologized, and explained everything. Claire, I know you're the sweetest, most loving girl. You just got carried away with your frivolous Instagram popularity. Besides, I know you're not a thief. Then Liam told me that out of suspicion, he asked to check different CCTV at the shopping mall and discovered that it was Tori who dropped the necklace box into my bag. Turns out, she was only hanging out with me because I was famous and rich. So when Isabella paid her, she turned 180 degrees, running after Isabella and playing tricks on me. Liam reported this to the principal, and now both of them have been suspended. That's it. Chasing after popularity on the internet didn't bring me any real friends, but only virtual fans. And a fake friend, sadly. I got blindsided by the likes and followers and overlooked what was truly important. My real-life relationships and the people who genuinely care for me. After that incident, I decided to deactivate my Instagram account for a while. At least until I feel stable again. And even if I lose all my followers, I don't really mind anymore. Because right now, I'm spending time with those who really matter to me. It was the last lap and I was in the final stretch. There was only one car ahead of me and I could see the finish line coming close. So I pushed on the acceleration as far as it could go. Suddenly I heard a weird noise coming from the engine and lost control at once. The car started spinning like crazy and off the track onto the grass. Hi, I'm Natalie and it's me behind that wheel. You may be wondering how I got myself into that situation. So let's begin from the start. I was born into a racing family, so the passion for sports naturally ran in my veins. But my life somehow resembled Maggie Payton in the movie Herbie, as my dad didn't allow me to race. Instead, he put all his faith in my adopted brother, Jeremy, and by pouring everything he knew into teaching him, with a hope that he'd become a great racer. Only the explanation to this wasn't as complex as in the movie. My mom passed away when I was a newborn, but no vehicle accident was involved. It's just my dad was of the opinion that ladies should be gentle and sweet. So he forbade me from participating in racing or anything even remotely dangerous. Despite that, growing up with Jeremy by my side was truly a blessing. Although not related by blood, we were very close. Jeremy often let me take the wheel of his race car without dad knowing, and he even taught me all he had learned from dad. Over time, I was able to catch up to him in terms of racing prowess. Today, he had a big race, and as usual, I went to his room to check on him. But he was still in bed. 
His face was pale and obviously he was in pain. Jeremy, what's wrong? I think I got food poisoning from that gas station hot dog. Gosh, just drop it. You can't drive in this condition. I can't. This is the qualifying round for the championship season. Dad will be so disappointed in me. So, there's only one way. Hey, I can drive in your place. Are you crazy, Natty? Blah! Jesus, see? There's no time. Under the racing gear, nobody can tell us apart. He was reluctant for a while, but finally gave in. So here I am, in a super cool appearance. I felt a wave of exhilaration that sent me sprinting to the track. Passing other racers with deft accuracy, I left trails of smoke in my wake as I smoothly swerved into the tight turns. When I reached the final lap, I gave it my all and finished in first place. Yippee! I got back to the waiting area after the race, then was suddenly dragged away. Hey, Jeremy's here. I'm all right now. Just want to make sure you made it out okay. Congrats on first place. Thank you. Now switch clothes with me. They need to see your face on the podium. As Jeremy raised up the trophy, I couldn't help but imagine myself in his place, overcome with happiness. That evening, the race was replayed on TV. Jeremy, your style is different today. You finally understood how to drive more freely. I've always said you have potential, yet you don't have the guts to shatter limitations. But if you keep racing like that, we may need to get you another trophy shelf. Uh, yes, I'll try. You were really cool today. Keep up the good work. After that race, I still felt the electric rush lingering in my bones. So I asked Jeremy to let me keep taking his place. Enough, Natty. Last time I did it as a last resort. You don't really want to be a racer anyway. Let me help you. In the meantime, you can focus on your passion. Seeing him hesitate, I continued. If you're afraid of being caught, just be there at all times so we can swap back whenever we need to. Jeremy's Jeremy. Couldn't say no to my puppy eyes. After that, I wore Jeremy's racing suit and entered all of his competitions. During that time, Jeremy would covertly hide among the crowd and wait. Oh, did I mention that my brother is a huge crochet fanatic? He even runs an Etsy business stocked with incredible pieces he made all by himself. Things were going kind of smoothly, but public practice was out of the question because we had to keep this a secret from dad. So Jeremy's plan was for me to pretend to be dating the team mechanic, Royce, also his best friend. This would give me an excuse to go to the track on a regular basis to practice. The following day, Jeremy took me to meet Royce, and luckily he was so friendly and agreed to assist us right away. Although balancing school and racing was hard, I still nailed it beautifully. At school, nobody knew I came from a racing family as we never appeared together in public. Not to brag, but a lot of guys were smitten with me. However, this dude, Liam, stood out. He's actually Jeremy's biggest racing rival, so I couldn't help but laugh internally as he made many attempts at wooing me in school. If you were a vegetable, you'd be a cute cumber. Just to turn green with envy at me on the racetrack, as he had no idea it was me under this costume. <laughs> it made sense, given he hadn't lost to Jeremy this many times before. Yeah! Hey, Jeremy, what's your deal? Your racing style has changed so drastically. Just then, a staff member from our team turns to me. Yeah, and you've been really quiet lately. Uh, um, <clears throat> I'm just focusing on the competition. And so, this began my official rivalry between Liam and I. We were racing neck in neck, but all of a sudden my engine died and stopped in the middle of the track. I watched as a few cars zoomed past me and Liam took the win. My win! Seeing that dude get out of his car and reveal his smug face had my blood boiling. The next week, I was in another race to make up for last week's fiasco, but this time I had a flat tire. Were the racing gods against me beating Liam? Due to my recent losing streak, some of my sponsors threatened to have their sponsorship withdrawn if I don't win the next race. So this time, I got Royce to double check. No, triple check that the car was ready to race. I scrutinized every nook and cranny, same as the last few races. If something goes wrong again, then my guess is that you have a petty guy willing to sabotage you. My next race was going well, but on the last lap, as I reached a tight turn, I pressed on the brake and my car was not slowing down. Time seemed to slow as the wall rushed closer. My palms clenched the steering wheel. It was a dance of split-second decisions and instinct, but I managed to swerve, the tire screeching in protest as I narrowly avoided disaster. Close shave. I looked over to the finish line and saw that Liam had once again secured first place. He was definitely behind this. So I quickly got changed and barged into Liam's waiting room to confront him. Oh, my angel. What are you doing in this fiery battlefield? It's you who played tricks on me. My brother. Right? Spit it out. Your brother? Who? Jeremy Wilson? You sabotaged someone else's car too, or what? 
What are you talking about? Drop the act. You're the one who benefits the most if my brother loses. Recently, his car kept breaking down. This can't be a coincidence. It just seems like luck is on my side. See, the girl I like also happens to come from a famous racing family. We're a match made in heaven. How can you be so casual about this? Don't you know how dangerous it is to drive with broken brakes? If not for my driving skills, I would have been injured. Wait, your driving skills? Were you the one driving the car? Um, I mean, my brother. Oh my god, it's you! I knew something's off lately. Watch your tongue. I, I didn't say anything. Focus on the actual conversation. You either confess to the crime, or I will investigate and expose your true face to the whole world. Mark my words. I couldn't believe I just let my secret slip to my biggest rival. If Jeremy knew this, he'd definitely tell me to quit racing. So after a sleepless night, I decided to meet Liam for a proper talk, but he found me first. Are you Google? Cause you have everything I'm searching for. Stop messing around. I'm not done with you yet. The you broke my car case? I had no idea about it, I swear. I'm competitive, but not that low. But isn't it normal for a car to suddenly break down sometimes? Put that aside. Anyway, have you told anyone about my identity yet? No, but what's up with that? I want you to keep your mouth shut. So let's make a deal. What do you want? Except for a date like in some sappy rom-coms, of course. Then nothing. Just don't avoid me anymore. And tell me why you have to disguise as your brother. That's none of your business. All right, then I'll ask someone else. Ugh, fine. Just promise you won't tell anyone. Then I told Liam everything. And since that day, he had officially become my shadow. No matter at school or on the track. I need to complain to Spotify for not naming you this week's hottest single. Oh wow, they really look cute together. Even though they're competitors. Love always wins. And that's how we accidentally became a gay couple in the racing scene. At first, I found Liam very annoying, but soon I realized his great passion for racing matched my own, and his insights into the racing world were unexpectedly captivating. I found myself opening up to Liam, sharing my thoughts and feelings with ease, and somehow felt happy around him. But the mystery around my broken car hadn't unfolded, so I couldn't let my guard down. And here comes the last qualifying match before the championships. My dad was also here today to motivate everyone. I was so nervous, yet still had to act lovey-dovey with Royce in front of dad. Obviously, Liam wasn't happy about that. He kept coming in between us, even though he knew we were just pretending. Natalie, focus! I couldn't stand to keep my secret any longer. So I gotta carry the day to prove myself, then reveal the truth to him and race under my own identity. I turned on the engine's full power and felt its huge force as I raced. My helmet fought the wind, and the air surge was like a thrilling symphony. It was the last lap, and I was in the final stretch. There was only one car ahead of me, Liam's car, and I could see the finish line coming close. So I pushed on the acceleration as far as it could go. As I raced past him, I was both precise and fast. My heart pounded in my chest, and I could feel an adrenaline rush through my body. Suddenly, a strange sound came from my car, and I lost control at once. The car started spinning like crazy and off the track onto the grass. I was dizzy, but lucky enough, not a scratch. As I came to, the first person I saw was Liam. He dropped everything just to check that I was okay. He took me to my pit stop, where my teammates rushed over to support. Suddenly, my dad appeared. I was panicking, and I didn't know where to go or hide when... Natalie, no need to hide anymore. I already know. <sighs> How? That doesn't matter. Look at you. What a mess. I just wanted to prove to you that I can do it. This is my passion. Why do you always stop me? Your passion? You mean falling off the track? You just ignored all the times I'd won first place. You're a terrible, selfish, evil father who has no love for your children and always forces others to do this, do that. People don't respect you because they want to. Everyone only listens to you because they're afraid of you, just like me and Jeremy. Just then, Dad slapped me hard across the cheek. I stumbled back and fell onto Liam. It was you, wasn't it? I, uh, I'm sorry. I just couldn't watch you get yourself in danger anymore. Meeting you is my entire life's greatest regret. Before anyone could see me cry, I ran away. I have nothing left. No one understands me. No one. I lay there in my room, consumed by a cloud of gloom after Dad's week-long grounding. Suddenly, a pebble knocked at my window. It was Liam. He was trying to throw a rope up to me. After a moment of hesitation, I finally climbed down. I'm sorry I went behind your back. I didn't know your dad would go that far. 
I care about you and just want you to be safe. But now I realize the way to do that is to find the true culprit who vandalized your car. Liam's apology felt really sincere. Look at him. I couldn't stay mad forever. The last time you raced, you never left your car side. The pre-checks are where we need to look into. Are you sure you can fully trust this Royce guy? He's my brother's best friend. Why would he sabotage me? You're just being subjective. Suddenly, a memory resurfaced in me. <gasps> Last week, I saw Royce lingering around the car for longer than the usual inspection. He told me that I need a new head gasket or else I wouldn't be able to accelerate without blowing the engine. Now, when I think of it, it seems kind of fishy. So we rushed to Royce's shop immediately. Natalie, what are you doing here? I'm sorry to hear things have been rough between you and your dad. But you're not sorry for almost taking my life? What are you talking about? Cut the act. I've got all the evidence against you. What evidence? Shut up. I have CCTV footage of your criminal acts. If I give it to the racing committee, you'll be out for good. What do you think? My hands were trembling as I hoped that Royce couldn't see through my bluff. But shockingly, Royce's face went pale and he crumbled to the ground. All right, Natalie, it's me. But I didn't mean to hurt you. I just want to help Jeremy. How does that help Jeremy? Actually, I have a crush on him and Jeremy confided in me once. I don't know what to do. I love Natalie very much, but I always feel self-conscious in front of her. I'm just an adopted child. Becoming a racer is all that my dad wishes for me. If I stop racing, he won't love me anymore. Meanwhile, Natalie's far better than me from the beginning. If dad finds out I'm such a loser, he will disown me. Jeremy, my poor brother. I just wanted to scare you into not racing. Everything I did to your car was carefully deliberated beforehand so that you wouldn't get hurt. I'm sorry. I'll find a way to fix everything. I got home later that night, only to hear arguing from the living room. What you did to Natalie was unfair. You kept her from doing what she loves, just like me. I've never dared to admit this, but now, Dad, racing isn't my passion. This is. What? But you find it too girly, right? Actually, I just race to please you. And only this simple thing makes me happy. Unable to stand by, I interjected, revealing how Jeremy was living in so much fear among his own family. They were shocked for a moment. Then Dad said, Jeremy, it's all my fault to put so much pressure on you and make you feel like you weren't loved enough. You're always my son, no matter if you choose racing or not. And Natalie, I'm sorry for hitting you. The pain on your cheek may have gone, but still lingers in my hand. I just didn't want to risk losing you. I never told you this, but when your mother was pregnant with you, she got sick, and I could have lost both of you when she went into labor. Ever since that day, I swore to keep you safe, alive, and healthy. Dad, I love you, but I love racing too. I hope that I can count on your support on the track. Then I revealed that Royce was the one who sabotaged my car. They were both shocked and furious, especially Jeremy. But after being told the full story, they decided to forgive Royce as he showed his remorse by confessing his crime and was temporarily suspended. We had not seen him since then. True compassion lies not only in caring for someone, but also in caring for them in the right way. Misguided intentions can unintentionally sow the seeds of unintended consequences. Finally, I could officially join the race using my own name. Dad came to see me today as well. He seemed quite concerned, but encouraged me anyway. Suddenly, Liam approached me. If I win this time, fair and square, would you go on a date with me? You have no chance to win, but a date? You earned it. Hi there, I'm Anita, a science pro and robotics prodigy. I've won countless trophies, including one for making a talking replica of BB-8. But it's my crush's heart that I can't win. Tom has just refused to accompany me to the last middle school dance. But who cares? I've got my bestie Barb. It'll still be fun. We can go together. We arrived at the dance to find that everyone had dates, except for us. Well, this is a little awkward. Move. This is a dance floor, grannies. Either you dance or get out. I bet this is the first party you've ever got to attend. As if Tom would go out with such a loser. Yeah, you should try asking your robots out instead. As they walked off laughing, I felt so disheartened. Barb told me not to listen to them, but their words niggled away at me. I realized if I didn't change, then I'd waste the rest of my teen years by being a loser that got left out of all the fun. I needed to reinvent myself now before it was too late. Over the summer break, I thought it over and realized that there was only one way forward. I should flip the script, where nobody knew who I was. And this is the perfect occasion for that. High school! 
I purposely chose a school that's across the city. It's a bit inconvenient, but that's how, to be sure, I would not run into anyone from my local middle school. Of course, except for Barb. She's going there with me also. Hey, recognize me? I'm still Anita. Like my new look? I've had a style update, ditched my glasses, and all the uncool geeky stuff. Ooh, let's surprise my bestie. <laughs> Anita? Whoa, talk about a Captain Marvel transformation. Gee, thanks. This hair color is so in season right now. Hang on, you look just like Chelsea. Oh, do I? How funny. You sound like her too. Okay, so Chelsea was this popular girl from middle school. Um, yeah, I may have spent all summer studying her. All right, I actually mirrored her style and mannerisms. I'm just learning to better myself. This isn't any different from using humans as models when programming a robot. Besides, it's not like Chelsea's here to mind. Speaking of robots, how's your BB-8? No, that's my past. We'll never be cool and get boyfriends if our peers think we're nerds. Come with me after school, I'll give you a makeover too. It's okay, Anita. I don't mind being a nerd. But if this makes you happy, then you have my full support. My sweet, naive Barb has no idea how incredible being cool would be. They're the cool kids here, aka celebrities. They're so dazzling and popular. And oh my god, who's that? He's so dreamy. So I confidently strutted over to introduce myself to the whole group when... Ah! Luckily, no one seemed to notice my fall, or they just didn't care. <sighs> Anyways, this was only my first day here. I had loads of time to fit in with the celebrities. And then catch that hottie, who supposedly named Eric's attention. At first, the popular girls didn't notice me, but then a few days in, Lou, the celebrity's leader, had a lipstick emergency and I sprung to her rescue. See? I told you, this burgundy shade really pops against your cool undertone. Ruby Woo? That's so 2015, Ashley. You can put that away. And easy peasy, I became part of the group. They invited me to their parties, shopping trips, and spa days. It's like entering a completely new world. An extra shiny one. I got to sit with them at lunch where they Ubered low calorie food. Normally, I had the same as them, but today my mom packed me a special sandwich with the moist maker, just like Ross's from Friends. Sorry guys, but Anita doesn't share food. <laughs> Are you seriously going to drink that? You can practically see the fat and lactose swirling in it. Gross. Oh, okay. Looks like the moist maker would have to wait. I looked around and saw Barb sharing her mom's amaze balls, mac and cheese with her new geeky friends. I've not spoken to Barb properly in weeks. We kept trying to reschedule as I had manicures with Lou, Haley's party, and all these ever after school shopping trips. Which kept getting so expensive. Aren't you gonna buy that? You haven't bought anything. Um, that's because I only wear tailor-made clothes made of Egyptian cotton or at least silk linen. Um, okay. In that case, you can be our assistant. Make sure you wear a cute cardigan tomorrow for a OOTD Instagram post. Ashley has made a list of the available colors. That's why I had to use all of my allowance on this cardigan. But it's fine. That's just how popular clicks had to be. And it's so nice of them to let me hang around. I proudly strutted alongside the celebs, looking just like one of them. Other students gobbed at us, and it sure felt good. But suddenly, this dizzy spell came over me. I started shaking and feeling cold. Then, pitch black. I woke up in the infirmary to Barb's worried face. Oh good, you're awake. It's no surprise you passed out. You aren't eating enough. What? I'm eating just fine. Besides, skinny is chic. I'm not arguing with you. You're lucky your head didn't hit the floor thanks to Eric. Eric saved me? He must have caught me like in a romantic movie. This diet is amazing. I wouldn't have been in Eric's arms without it. Later, I tried to thank him, but he put his headphones on and walked off and I never saw him at any of the celebs' parties or anything. A hot guy like him is probably hanging out with an even cooler clique and interested in even more popular girls. I need to try harder. But my geeky side wasn't going to stay suppressed. One time, this guy slated Spider-Man 2099, my favorite character ever. Dude doesn't understand how the multiverse works, and his suit sucks. Are you kidding me? As if you know how it works, his suit incorporates Parker tech and has stealth features and exploding spider saucers. Okay, cool it, new girl. It's just some weirdo jumps around in spandex. Right, be cool. Cool kids didn't geek out over superheroes. Luckily, everyone else seemed distracted. I turned to look and saw them already flocked around some new kid with a huge backpack, a comic t-shirt, and jeans. Huh, it's like looking at middle school me. When I managed to get a closer look, I almost fell over in shock. It was Chelsea! Why would pretty popular Chelsea do a total 180 on her looks? I tried to avoid Chelsea. 
But then one time when I was trying to approach Eric, she appeared and he actually spoke to her. Does Chelsea know Eric? Since when? How come? Ah! Time stopped as I stared into his big dreamy eyes, but falling for each other again? <laughs> he might as well just stay in his arms. I quickly walked away and passed Chelsea. Our eyes met. Did she recognize me? She didn't say anything, but was that a smirk I saw? I needed to find out if Chelsea really recognized me, so I turned to Barb. It was a bit awkward, as we hadn't spoken in a while. But luckily, Barb was cool about it and said she'd try to find out. We chatted a bit, and then she asked me, We are still going to Comic-Con on the 7th, right? Yeah, of course! Can't wait! I was excited about Comic-Con, until... A few days later, the celebrities had a big announcement. They were attending Conan Gray's concert on the 7th. Are you coming, or do you have some tragic nerdy convention to go to? Huh? That's oddly specific. I panicked and said yes to the concert. We had to give money to Asher the next day, and she would take care of purchasing everyone's tickets. But thanks to that overpriced cardigan, how am I supposed to afford this? Hmm, I guess there was one way to pay for it. Me and Barb's Comic-Con fund, which we'd been saving since middle school. I was only borrowing and would definitely pay it back. The following day, the celebs gathered to discuss the concert. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw a flustered-looking Barb. What about her plan? Did you just spend all your savings on some concert you don't even care about? I'm sorry, I promise I'll pay you back. I just needed some time. So, you spent my share too? How could you? I felt terrible. I never meant to upset my friend like that. I just really wanted to fit in. Only after that day, I found myself miserable with the celebs. The more time I spent with them, the more things about them got me second-guessing this group's dynamic. For instance, they talked a lot about the importance of being eco-friendly, but ordered Uber Eats almost every day, and constantly brought new, cute, reusable straws in Stanley Cups. Moreover, it was always lose weight or the highway, and they even trash-talked their own group members behind their backs. I found myself often looking around for Barb and then feeling extra guilty. On my way home, I was dragging my feet, feeling awful, when I passed an appliance store. I saw some students from my school's robotics team struggling with their droid, so I gladly offered a hand. If you want my lunch money, take it, but please leave Gears Brosnan alone! We worked hard on it! I tried explaining that I just wanted to help, but they kept pushing me away. I stared down at myself and realized that I wasn't welcomed because I'd given up everything to look like a celebrity. However, I didn't feel like one. I'd stood by and let the celebs push everyone else around. Was this really the life I wanted? That weekend was supposed to be spa day with the celebs, so I went out to the mall to ask Lou for my concert ticket. I was going to sell it and pay Barb back. Only when I got there, I saw Chelsea with them. But she looked like her cool self again. Uh-oh, I better go. But too late. Chelsea caught me and told everyone. Guys, look who's here. Fun fact, Anita and I used to be friends back in middle school. Cover yourself in foundation all you want, but your nerdiness will still show. Everyone started laughing, and that's when it dawned on me. They were all in on Chelsea's plans to expose me. I wanted to leave, but I still needed my ticket back. Sure, you can have it back, but on one condition. Wash off your Chelsea disguise and go back to being pathetic little you again. And so they told me to wash my hair in this decorative basin in a lush store before everyone's confused eyes and their live streaming cameras. I swallowed my pride and did it for Barb. But afterward, Lou turned back on her word. Actually, I gave it to Chelsea. Tough luck. Oops, too bad I never agreed to the deal Lou made with you. I felt overcome with panic and shame. I ran and I bumped into someone. Eric! Seeing how upset I was, he took me for coffee and a chat. As soon as we sat down, I burst into tears and told him how I'd lost everything. My popularity, dignity, friends. It all started to fall apart when Chelsea turned up all of a sudden. And then the domino effect took over. Chelsea? I'd always known she's catty, but I never thought she'd go that far. How can you be friends with her? <laughs> what? No, it's not what you think. You still don't recognize me? What do you mean, recognize? Then he revealed that he was from my middle school. I was shooketh. But if I squinted real hard, I guess he did look vaguely familiar. Whoa, puberty hit you like a truck. Same for you. Yeah, no, it wasn't puberty for me. I got emotionally scarred from being an outcast and became afraid of missing out on cool stuff, so I turned myself into a Chelsea clone to be popular. That's insane. But if it means anything, I prefer the old you. It's great seeing you at the school. But when I saw that you changed and joined the celebs, I was kind of apprehensive. But for real, though, I would have died for you to notice me. I was beyond surprised. He liked me all along? 
Suddenly, Chelsea jumped in. Why has it always been her? I changed myself to look like her. Didn't you say you liked nerdy girls? So why not me? Say what? Chelsea liked Eric? So she really copied my look. And for that reason? I'm sorry, Chelsea, but it's my feelings. I can't believe you rejected me twice for this little nerd! And she doesn't even look like herself anymore! Chelsea, it's never been about looks. It's about who she is. In the midst of it, I finally understood something. I was fine just being me. I never needed to be anything else. I've switched schools and turned myself into a dork for you! Ah! You're lucky this time! I watched Chelsea stomp out. I realized how I was constantly anxious and on edge that I'd messed up while hanging out with the celebrities. I missed the truly happy moments with real friends where I could just be me. All this time, I thought I'd been missing out on all the fun, but turns out, I missed nothing. The true way to have beautiful teenage years is to spend it with people that really appreciate you and do the things that you actually enjoy. I thanked Eric, then left. There was something important I needed to do first. I went home and fixed my BB-8, then took it over to Barb's house. Sorry, Barb. I'm so sorry, Barb. I was so desperate to be cool that I overlooked what really mattered. I miss you and our friendship so much. I missed you too. And I saw that humiliating video and just wanted to know you were okay. On second thoughts, I'll forgive you if you give me your BB-8. <laughs> no can do, as I'm selling it online to make money to pay you back. I only brought it here to make my apology more meaningful. Did it work? We both hug. The next few days at school, I tried my best to fix things. I returned to my old image, well, with a slight upgrade. I can't let my beauty skills go to waste now. And I dug out all my geeky stuff. I showed up at the robotics club, and this time, I confidently strode over and immediately fixed their robot. I told you I could help. Don't judge a book by its cover. That's a celebrity's job. Look at you, all happy and smiley with your own loser nerd kind. Yeah, I'm happy, while you once tried and failed to be one of us, remember? Being a nerd isn't just about appearance, it's about what's inside. By the way, how was the concert? I heard your fanatic behavior got you kicked out. Sounds exciting. Chelsea and the celebs looked fuming as they sashayed off, but I didn't care, as I was finally back where I belonged. Who put those books on the upper shelf? And why were my clothes in the closet reorganized? Did she seriously go into my room and rearrange my stuff? Unbelievable! Avery, dinner's ready. Okay, Dad, wait a sec. My dad shouted back. What's taking you so long? Come down now. Dinner is getting cold. Ugh, okay, I'm coming. As I walked into the kitchen, I gave her a resentful look. What were you doing? You know dinner's always at six. Well, that's because she went into my room and reorganized everything. It was like Hurricane Katrina stopped by my room. I had to put everything back where it was. You must be wondering why I had this attitude towards my mom. Well, first, she isn't my mom. She's my stepmom. And second, I just couldn't stand her. You see, my parents divorced when I was 15. And after just six months, my dad started dating Rose. My first impressions weren't great. I mean, look at her. Okay, she's kind of beautiful, but her style just doesn't fit her age. She has this whole wannabe rocker thing going on. No, I'm serious. She even has a tank top that says, I'm a rocker mom. My actual mom was the total opposite of Rose. She looks how a mom's meant to, with her elegant clothes and polite demeanor. And that's also how she raised me to be. Then there's the age difference. Rose is a decade younger than Dad. Suspicious? What if she was only after his money? I thought they wouldn't last, but then one year later, they announced that they were getting married. So, yeah, you can see where my hate was coming from. That's enough of me telling you about my family. Let's go back to this boring dinner. My dad just gently said, Rose was just helping you. She didn't mean it. Now let's dig in. This smells delicious, honey. Ugh, whatever. I rolled my eyes and sat at the table. I looked down and couldn't believe my eyes. It was spinach and sausage lasagna, Mom's signature dish. How dare Rose copy it? First, she rearranged my room, and now she wanted to replace my mom? Talk about a real-life evil stepmom. No way I was going to eat that. So I stood up, 
said I wasn't hungry, and started walking off. Dad stood up and was about to yell at me, but Rose stopped him. Whatever. I still ran upstairs and slammed my door shut. The next day, when I came home from school, I saw that Rose had a few friends over for beer and pizza in the living room. Look at them. They looked like they were having a band meeting. Normally, women their age have tea parties, not fast food fests. Hey, Avery. Rose greeted me. I just ignored her and went upstairs. But suddenly, I heard one of her friends say, What a stubborn kid. Doesn't she have manners? If I were you, I would show the kid who's the boss around here. Jesus, her friends were awful just like her. Whatever, I didn't care what they said. But then Rose replied, Hey, don't talk about her like that. Avery's a lovely girl. She's just had a lot going on the past two years. Every child would behave the same after their parents' divorce, don't they? She just needs a little time adjusting. Oh, wow. I didn't expect those words coming from Rose. She actually stood up for me? Maybe, just maybe, I've misjudged her. Maybe I should try and give her a fairer chance? So that evening, when I saw her watching a movie, I walked over with a big bowl of popcorn and asked if I could join her. Rose looked shocked, like she'd seen a ghost or something. Then she gave me a big smile and said, Of course, I would really love that. I sat down next to her, and we watched Mad Max together. Oh, wow. There was a lot of violence and some weird-looking characters. Normally, I don't watch these kinds of films. I'm more of a rom-coms girl. But that movie was really, um, interesting. We talked during it, and I must say Rose is actually kind of cool. We were both laughing when I heard someone coughing behind me. I turned around to see my mom standing there with a frown on her face. Avery? Why didn't you return my calls and messages? Oh, I haven't introduced my mom to you yet. This is my beautiful mom, Melanie. She's a kind, gentle, elegant woman, and also a bit disciplined. But that's okay. I still love my mom very much. Mom? What are you doing here? I called you a dozen times, but you didn't answer. Clearly, you're preoccupied. I got worried, so I swung by to check on you. Oh, sorry, Mom. Rose and I were having so much fun that I didn't notice my phone. My mom knitted her brows and asked, Are we still on for shopping tomorrow? You need a new outfit for the debate contest, right? Yeah, of course. I will meet you at the mall after school. Oh, you two are going shopping? That's so cool. Can I join? At that moment, I thought, what a great idea. I mean, so far, they seem to get along okay. But what I didn't know was that a war between my mom and my stepmom had just launched. Rose gave me an excited smile. But mom, on the other hand, didn't look so thrilled. Maybe she was still mad that I missed her calls? So the next day after school, I went outside and saw my mom standing by her car. Oh, was she waiting for me? I was about to walk toward her when I suddenly noticed she was giving dirty looks to someone. Oh my god, Rose was waiting on the other side of the street. I quickly jumped behind some bushes to hide from them. Don't tell me the two were here to pick me up. Suddenly, my phone rang. It was mom. There's no way I was deciding between them. So I told her I was already on my way to the mall. Ugh. Now, let's talk about my fun family day out at the mall. Hmm, it was a disaster. My mom and Rose have very different style, ofs, so my mom chose this elegant black vest and skirt for me, but Rose thought I looked like Ruth Bader Ginsburg. No offense, she's a badass who brought justice to women, but Rose was kind of right. That outfit just didn't work for me. Then Rose chose this red dress for me, but, oh man, that's kind of revealing. They were constantly dragging me from this shop to the other like they were playing tug of war. And I was the freaking rope. I couldn't handle it anymore. Therefore, I just chose any dress so they'd stop throwing clothes in my face. On the way out of the mall, we passed a piercing shop. I've been wanting a helix piercing at the upper cartilage of my ear. They look so cool. I asked mom, but she profusely refused. 
Her own words were, it would make you look rebellious. His mom was still strict as always. Nonsense. Rose snorted. Melanie, Avery's old enough to make her own decisions. If she wants a piercing, then let her. Then she turned to me and said, come, I will take you inside. Oh my God, I couldn't believe it. I glanced at mom and she looked like she was about to explode with anger. But Rose had a point. I'm already 16 for crying out loud. After 15 minutes, Rose and I came out. Oh, thank God. Did you reconsider getting that ear piercing? Oh, yeah. Rose said that a nose piercing would suit me better. What? Uh-oh. Maybe the nose piercing wasn't such a good idea, because the tension between them was now catastrophic. Hmm. I needed a way to bring them together. So I came up with a brilliant plan. I arranged a holiday in Brazil for us all. I have a friend there, Pedro. He was an exchange student at my school, so he could show us around. Dad was in on the plan. At the last minute, he pretended to be busy and canceled his spot. Perfect. Now Rose and Mom would have plenty of bonding time. As soon as we walked into the hotel lobby, they started fighting over who got to share a room with me. What's wrong with them? We just landed in Brazil. So I took the keys from the receptionist and told them they were sharing, because I'll be by myself. <laughs> then in the evening, after we all got some rest, I waited for them in the lobby. Man, what's taking them so long? Suddenly, I saw two women walking over, and they were pushing each other. My God, it was Rose and Mom. I tried to keep calm and said, Jesus, can you two please stop acting like kindergarten kids? Mom sneered. Well, Rose over here took a 45-minute shower while I urgently needed to use the bathroom. You know how sensitive my stomach is. Rose rolled her eyes. That's because I have a strict beauty routine to follow. At least you got some sleep. I didn't, thanks to your bulldozer snoring. I certainly did not. Then they began to stare off like two UFC fighters. I shouted, Enough already! Listen up! I just made a dinner reservation for you two to get to know each other better. I have plans with Pedro, so I'll catch you both later. They were about to refuse, but I gave them this really intense look. Well, at least you're having fun. You two should hit a bar. Nothing can top some Brazilian bars. No drinking! and be back by 10 p.m. tops. Yeah, yeah, I know. Have fun. I waved at them and left the hotel. The next morning, I saw them talking to each other. Actually talking, not bickering. So I walked over to them and asked, Well, how was dinner? Then they told me it was actually really great. They were able to put their differences aside and got along. Success! <laughs> so now I could enjoy the rest of the trip. After breakfast, Pedro came by to take us on a hiking trip in the forest. It was so wonderful. The fresh air, the birds singing. Well, maybe except for the heat and the mosquitoes. Pedro wanted to bring us to this spot he said was perfect for watching the sunset. Awesome! It was all going well at first, but then as Rose avoided a tree branch, it accidentally hit my mom. My God, you hit me on purpose, didn't you? What? That's absurd. I was just avoiding the branch. Oh, please. As if. Are you saying that I'm lying? Hey, guys, stop it. Let's be more understanding and talk things out. Like how you did it last night, okay? That's when I found out that they were just pretending to be friends so that I didn't set up any more dinners for them. Oh, my God. Unbelievable. After their friendship act was exposed... They began speed hiking, like they were in a competition or something. But, yep, after only 15 minutes, they were exhausted and couldn't even stand straight anymore. I began to shout at them. This is great. Your dumb feud is ruining my vacation. Then I walked away to avoid them, but of course, not too far. As I walked, I tried to think of another plan to get them close. Then I realized I'd wandered further away from the group. Okay, Avery, don't panic. Pedro had given me a map of the forest, 
I just needed to get to that marked X. It sounded easy. Trust me, it wasn't. I walked for hours and still couldn't find the spot. Oh no, it was getting dark and I was totally exhausted. I sat on the ground and couldn't hold back my tears. I was about to lose hope when I suddenly heard Rose and Mom's voices. Oh great, I was lost and could still hear them arguing in my head. I must be losing my mind. But wait, suddenly they appeared from behind some trees. It was really them. I couldn't believe it. I ran into their arms and gave them both the biggest hug ever and cried like a baby. Before we went to the airport to head home, Pedro came to say goodbye. Thanks for the hiking trip and also carrying out my plan. No problem. Your plan was definitely crazy, but it totally worked. After you went missing, they actually teamed up to find you. They helped one another when one tripped down or got exhausted and kept each other motivated. Pedro grinned at me, then continued. I too was freaking out when I didn't see you at our meeting point. Luckily, I still found you. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that pretending to be lost was a part of my plan, but what I didn't expect was to actually get lost. Thank God for Pedro. And you know what? After that incident, my mom and Rose grew close. Actually, a bit too close, I think. <laughs> they even sometimes hang out without me. Can you believe it? Turns out, even though they have two very different personalities and styles, they still have one big thing in common. They both love me. Bonjour! I'm Chloe, and I live here in the French city of Toulouse. I'm working on my debut romance novel about a couple destined to be together despite all the hurdles they face. If you like the sound of it, then leave a comment- BOO! <laughs> Lost in your dumb fictional world again? If you like the sound of it, then leave a comment! <laughs> That's Cedric, my brother. But I doubt it, because we have nothing in common. And he's a massive pain in my- uh -huh. Anyway, I guess you could say I'm introverted, and I dream of becoming a best-selling romance novelist, making a living out of doing what I love. Only, dreams don't always go to plan, and publishing houses don't seem to like my drafts. Meanwhile, Cedric is Satan in disguise, whose sole purpose is making my life miserable. He turned off my alarm and made me late for a meeting, changed all of my contacts' names to emojis, and one time, I woke up to see my laptop covered all in plastic wrap. The problem was, he got away with being a jerk simply because he was deemed good-looking. In his fangirl's eyes, he could do no wrong. Living with Cedric was such an endurance test, so I avoided him the best I could by going to a private school, instead of the same public school as him. Everything was fine, until our parents lost everything in stocks, and we had no choice but to move into this teeny, tiny house. One night, I went downstairs to get some water and saw Mom and Dad up late with bills piled up around them. Seeing them like that made me desperately want to help. So the next day, I told him that the public school had a creative writing club and that I wanted to transfer there. My tuition fees weren't a burden anymore, but going to the same school as Cedric was not ideal. So I insisted that he acted like he didn't know me at all. Still, the first few days were terrible as I kept getting lost and felt so out of place. I hardly looked up and only identified other students by their shoes. Thank goodness for the pink and white sneaker girl, Emma. She was the only person who actually noticed me, and when I told her about my writing dreams, she was really supportive. We became best friends and could chat about everything, even my annoying brother. Things were better at school, but not at home. My parents were still struggling to hide their money problems, and Cedric... Well, was just being Cedric. Couldn't he see that now wasn't the time for his clown antics? I helped out as much as I could by cleaning, doing laundry, preparing meals, and even got a part-time job in a patisserie. While he literally did nothing. Why can't you stop fooling around? Chill out, sis. Even when you have a mare, all the stress will give you gray hair. Fine, act like a moron and stay in this moronic place forever. I'll get our old house back alone. After a busy shift, I just wanted to get home and go straight to bed. Only when walking along the curb, I spotted Cedric doing some dumb, noisy performance. Ugh, such a laughable, selfish bum. I had to seriously hold back or else my fist would definitely land on his face. 
Oh, I still had the last chapter to finish. My body was ready to shut down, but I couldn't slack. Not if I wanted to complete it by Louis Beaumont's book launch. He's my favorite author. I'd planned for months to fly to Nice and hand him my manuscript. Suddenly, the lights went out. Guys, looks like the electricity company cut us off because of those unpaid bills. Gosh, we can't live like this. So I pulled out some money from the back of the manuscript. This was money for my niece trip. But this is more urgent. So I gotta do what I have to do. Mom, Dad, here's some money. Just to help out a bit. The next day, Cedric barged into my room with a smug grin on his face. Guess who's going to Paris? Try not to miss me too much, will ya? What? But, but where did you get your money from? Mom and Dad? Duh. Check it out. That's my money? I can't believe this. We don't even have electricity, but they gave him money to go mess around in Paris? I shoved him out of my room and slammed the door shut. I'd always tried my best to not disappoint them, yet they favored my deadbeat brother and spoiled him rotten. All this family stuff was eating me up, so on school day, I confided in Emma. Only when I tried talking to her, she seemed distracted and kept drifting with the music. Em, Em, are you listening? Oh, sorry, but this beat is straight up fire. Look, he's the winner of this contest. Isn't he amazing and talented? I looked at her phone and saw, what? Cedric? So he came to Paris for this stupid contest? Don't talk about him, okay? That's my selfish, uncaring brother I've always talked about. Be his fan, and we can't be friends anymore. Things got even worse when Cedric went home and literally made it rain with his reward money. Chloe, look at all of this money your brother won. Thanks to his talent, we can go back to our old house. Ugh, why is everything so easy for Cedric? He did some nonsense rap and became a celebrity? Meanwhile, it's me who had to give up my trip, my dream. At least we got the old house back, but day after day, these annoying reporters are driving me crazy. How did you come up with meaningful lyrics? Meaningful? Everyone knows rap isn't actually music. It's just some noise full of swearing and insults. Yeah, ignore her. She's just cranky from skipping breakfast. There's no escaping Cedric's name, not even at school. Please, please, please introduce me to him. Why are you so obsessed with him? Don't you remember anything I said about how terrible he is? Come on, give his music a try. I can't believe someone who wrote such beautiful lyrics can be as bad as you say he is. Fine. If she wanted to meet him, then I'd grant her that wish. It's about time she saw his true face. I opened the door and showed Emma inside when suddenly we were covered in a cloud of confetti. Why the long face? My grand welcome was the bomb. Do you know how long it would take to clean this mess? Ugh, Em, this is my brother. An idiot. Idiot brother. Em. But then I turned around to see Emma already soaking up Cedric's every word. I can't take this anymore. My time would be better spent writing. Trembling thoughts through fear. Your eyes will find mine. Love will bind us like a cat's nine lives. Wow, that's perfect. Wait, that voice sounds unfamiliar. Oh my, this guy was heartthrob level handsome. Bonjour, I'm Pierre, Cedric's colleague. Is he home? Yes, let me show you the way. What are you seeking him for? We're collaborating on my next album, so I'm here to practice. As a senior singer, I also helped Cedric build his show and industry connections. He's superb, isn't he? After that day, Pierre visited my house more often. Turns out he's a sweet and gentle guy who always brought us gifts, such as flowers and scented candles. And after dinner, he even helped me wash up. How can such an angel work with my devil brother? One day when I was out with Emma, suddenly she looped her arm around me and said, You sure seem chirper these days. It's probably because Cedric's often away on music shows. You're telling me it has nothing to do with Pierre? Come on, Chloe, it's written all over your face. Fine. He's really sweet, and his smile is as bright as the sun. How can I approach someone like him? Hmm, why not start with a love letter? I took Emma's advice and wrote the most romantic letter ever, then brought it to his company. If anyone asks, I'll say I'm here to see my brother. Huh? Are they arguing? I went over to Pierre and asked him what had happened. Oh, it's nothing really. Cedric is just stressed out from his busy schedule. Yeah, right. As if there was anything stressful about this nonsense rap thing. Now is my moment. So I stuffed the letter in Pierre's hand, then ran away. I was still giddy with excitement when I arrived home. Only Cedric ruined my mood by sitting there looking like he'd swallowed a wasp. Oh no, are all showbiz parties too tiring? What a tragedy. Shut it, Chloe. What does a dreamer like you know? Dreamer? 
At least I'm not a self-centered, shallow idiot. I sacrificed everything so you could go after your dumb rap career. And all you do is act like an ungrateful jerk. Grow up and stop being so childish. I expected him to shout back at me, but instead he gave me this dead look, then trudged off to his room. He didn't come down for dinner or anything for the next three days. Hmm, this house sure was quiet without him. But he's a chill guy and things will go back to normal soon, right? I guess I should just enjoy the peace while I could. The next day, Emma showed up at my house all worked up. Is Cedric here? He didn't answer any texts and calls. Huh? You two are messaging each other? Uh, um, I just wonder if he's okay. How typical of you to talk to him behind my back. To my surprise, Emma just impatiently barred past me and ran up to Cedric's room. Then she reappeared with a note. Cedric's gone. Jeez, how irresponsible and impulsive. He really doesn't care about anyone but himself. Enough. I won't listen to you badmouth your brother anymore. Can't you see he's seriously struggling and showing signs of depression? Who's the one who doesn't care about family here? And you really believe you're better than him? Emma's outburst left me stunned. Is Cedric really depressed? How was I meant to know that when he's always goofing around? That evening, Mom and Dad kept fretting about Cedric's disappearance. He gave us all to help us while we could do nothing to help him. Remember those days he performed on the streets? He gave us all the money he earned, and he always tried to cheer us up when things were down. Cedric only wanted to join the rap contest to win some more money. He was very nervous, but we believed in him, so we gave him the money to enter. Oh God, so I misunderstood him all along? Suddenly I remembered his winning track that Emma insisted that I listen to. I went up to my room and turned it on. It's about us, his beloved family. Turns out he wasn't a deadbeat idle loser like I thought he was. He always puts on a happy face to lift other spirits while quietly struggling with his own demons. I needed to find him and apologize immediately, so I went to Pierre for help. I had no idea he was struggling so badly. I should have noticed that he was suffering and not overloaded him with work. But there's an important show coming. If Cedric was a no-show, he'd be in breach of his contract and have to pay a huge sum in compensation. Oh no, that's not good. What should we do now? You know what? You look a lot like Cedric. How about you disguise as him? But how? Don't worry, our makeup team is top-notch. Nobody's gonna know. This all sounded crazy, but it seemed like I had no other choice. My family couldn't be in debt again for this. Being this close to Pierre made my heart flutter. He took me for my makeover, then I learned to lip-sync and perform on stage. I even tried to walk and talk like my brother. I felt bad about deceiving his fans, but I couldn't risk Cedric getting into big trouble. It's only a one-time thing. Sometimes I lip-sync too. It's no big deal. I felt a bit confused. Then suddenly, a stage crew member above me accidentally dropped a wrench. It could have knocked me off if Pierre didn't swoop in and save the day. Now, back to practicing, and oh boy, was it hectic. Pierre stayed with me the whole time and was really supportive. We also never stopped trying to look for Cedric together. I felt our connection growing, but couldn't figure out why he hadn't made any move. Maybe my first letter hadn't been clear enough, so I sneaked into Pierre's room and left him another one. Only later that day, I saw him glued to his phone, so I took a glance. Huh? He was messaging somebody with a very cheesy nickname. Right, he wasn't interested because he was already dating someone else. Oh no, I have to reclaim my second letter before humiliating myself. I ran into his room but couldn't find it anywhere. Wait, what's this? Here comes the big night. I was absolutely terrified. Pierre smiled sweetly at me and held my hands. We shared a look, then stepped on stage together. There were so many people out there. My legs felt numb, but then I spotted Emma beaming at me from the front row, and my nerves eased again. I quickly found the beat, then lip-synced and danced perfectly. But halfway through the song, the stage light suddenly went off and a shadowy figure walked toward me. Cedric! The audience oohed and awed, then clapped in excitement as Cedric continued the rest of the performance. During the break, everyone went backstage and saw Pierre grab Cedric's arm. Cedric, where have you been? We've all been worried sick. Drop the act. You're just using me to make yourself rich, forcing me to do show after show, and when I was exhausted, you pushed lip-syncing onto me. What are you talking about? These shows are to help you gain support. Starting out in this industry is hard. Hey, I even lent you some money to get your house back. You mean the money you used to tie my brother in with a stupid contract? You compelled Cedric to work exclusively with you, performing two years for free to clear his debt. But according to these receipts for each show, the money he should have received already exceeded the amount he owed you. 
What the? Surprised much? Now we have all the evidence against you. So what? Cedric signed it anyway. A contract is a contract. Break it and I'll get you kicked out of the company and make sure you never get any show again. Your whole family will be dirt poor alike before. I don't think so. What would the public say if they knew you've been flirting with him all along? And when he rejected you, you manipulated and overworked him until he agreed to date you. Uh, how long have you known? Long enough to expose you. Now, you have two options. One, cancel the contract within the next 24 hours and pay my brother the access money you exploited from him. Or two, we'll publish what you did and see if you survive in showbiz afterward. I don't hate you for having feelings for me, but this deal is not fair. Pierre looked nervous and angry, then just stormed off. I turned to my annoying, goofy brother and gave him a big hug. I'm sorry for misunderstanding you before. Why didn't you tell us that you borrowed money to get back our house? I know how much you wanted our house back, so I joined the contest, but the prize money wasn't enough. That's when I asked Pierre. Silly me. If you hadn't found the contract and receipts, I would have still believed his lies and worked till exhaustion. So you did get my message. I was about to shut off all connections to the world. But that day I felt super uneasy, so I opened my phone and saw your message. Must be sibling telepathy. One more thing. Emma, you truly helped me find myself again. What do you say? Do you want to be a superstar rapper's girlfriend? Yes, I do. Please keep the lovey-dovey stuff to a minimum in front of me. Luckily, I was spared when a stage crew called Cedric to go back on stage. You know, it's not easy for us artists to have a big platform, literally like the stage. We always have a price to pay for the glory. Because of that, I'm eternally grateful for my amazing family and friends who always have my back. And a big shout out to my sister for being my inspiration for this song. Then he started rapping to my poetry. His rhymes and my poems are flowing, really getting the crowd going. He's a lyrical gymnastic genius. After the show, Cedric received a video from Pierre. Cedric, I'm sorry for taking advantage of you. I like you so much and wanted to keep you close. I'll pay back what I owe you, then take a break from showbiz for a while. I really hope one day you can forgive me. Phew, all that drama was a lot for my introverted self to handle. So now I've treated myself to some me time to recharge. Thanks to Cedric rapping, dozens of my publishers reached out to me for my poems, including those who'd previously rejected me. <sighs> Gosh, am I seeing it wrong? A mail from Louis Beaumont himself? I can't wait to see him in person. And you keep working on your dream. Perhaps a secret angel is on the way to bring you a wonderful opportunity. You are watching the incredible Barry's Blue. I'm Sonya, the super talented lead vocalist. And that guy over there rocking the guitar is Eric, my boyfriend. He's also our composer and backing vocalist. Yep, my man's good at everything, just like me. Actually, he's the one who discovered my vocal talent and helped me on my road to fame. Our debut album exploded onto the charts. And the rest is history. Eric asked me to be his girlfriend right on stage after our set. I don't know who was more excited, me or my adoring fans. Everything was perfect. And then our next album flopped. I guess all that pressure had interrupted Eric's writing process. I tried to send him positive energy. We had a big show coming up to debut our new single and start our comeback. Who knows when the sun will rise again, right? But during our performance, as Eric stepped back to give me the spotlight, I stepped forward and suddenly slipped and fell. S sonya your nose! It's crooked! I was rushed into surgery, but my nose looked like a lightning bolt. I can't look like this. I must be beautiful! You'll always be the cutest girl to me. No need to worry. We can still fix it. But right after that, the photo of my busted nose hit the headlines. I got ridiculed for praising natural beauty and then getting plastic surgery. What vultures! I had to upload the video of me slipping to end these rumors, but they claimed I did it on purpose to get attention. What on earth? We thought all that drama was finally over, but no. Right when my nose healed, my chubby pre-puberty secondary school photo appeared all over the internet, which sparked rumors about me having my whole body reconstructed. Some anonymous posts even made up that I was hot-tempered and snooty to band crew and waiting staff. 
I mean, maybe I could be a bit abrupt, but I was famous, so I was allowed to get what I wanted. Then, Let's Cancel Sonya began to circulate. Do these tragic people have nothing better to do than gossip about me? But my fans took notice, and a load of our tour tickets got cancelled. My manager freaked out and made me go on leave until the rumors died down. How ridiculous! Worse still, they were actually going to try to replace me? The beautiful, one-of-a-kind lead vocalist? How dare they do this to me? I am the band! Hang in there, babe. I promise I'll find a way to get you back. Obviously, my photos didn't leak themselves. Some jerk did this, and it's now my life mission to track them down and make them pay. Okay, so from my internet searching, I traced the original rumor to this group of my anti-fans. Can you believe they actually met up at this cafe once a month just to badmouth me? They even had a schedule. How ridiculous! What had I ever done to them? Disguising myself, I showed up to find out more clues. Hmm, inside were those terrible leaked pictures of me. Jeez, these people clearly had way too much time on their hands. Wait, this guy looks familiar. Is he... Owen? My high school crush? He was my senior in the music club and a super talented singer, guitarist, and composer. But how come he's my anti-fan? I never even spoke to him. The group buzzed about how pretentious I am. They even said Eric and I were fake dating just to cover up the news about our latest album flop. Ahem. Obviously, our love is real. I never tire of hearing trash talking about that Eric guy's songs, but it's closing time. If you posted about Barry's Blue, please claim your money from the counter before leaving. What? Owen actually paid them to slander my band? Why was he so intent on ruining my career? Did he have a personal vendetta against me? I just had to find my own way to figure all this out. Making myself one of them should do it. I immediately called to apply for the job, and I got it. Showtime! It's important to look the part, so I dressed up as this innocent-looking girl for my first shift. Thanks to the magic of makeup, even I could hardly recognize myself. Call me Summer from now on. After the introduction, Owen immediately gave me tons of work. I had to do the heavy lifting and stinky, dirty work. I was a pampered star, not a grunt. Ugh, he's such an exploitive boss. I must have been crazy to have ever crushed on him. In the evening, the anti-fan group showed up again, followed by a familiar face. It's Rena, Owen's little sister. Back in high school, she was quite arrogant. It seemed like nothing had changed. Did you know that Sonya was such a weirdo in high school? Now that she's famous, she's acting like she's above everyone else. Stop right there, carrot hair. What's your name? Um, I'm Summer. So, Summer, here we've got a special requirement for every newbie. You have to pass the anti-fan test. Tell us, what do you think's the most irritating thing about Sonya? Ugh, now I have to defame myself? Actually, I was Sonya's childhood friend. Well, just a neighbor. She was the worst kid in the neighborhood. What did Sonya look like when she was young? And how was her personality? She was chubby and cruel to other kids. She threw bugs at them and never shared her toys. Take notes, guys. Remember to cite the source as Sonya's close neighbor. You can get some bonus, too, for contributing useful information like this. Was Rena also involved in this, along with her brother? When Rena left, the other anti-fans, Caleb, Violet, and June, still didn't leave, but turned to the stage and started tuning the instruments? What? They composed a whole song to mock me, not only about my surgery rumors, but also that I was a vain, hot-tempered, competitive, talentless, disrespectful, and never used my abundant money to help others. Her music was good, but the insolence killed their skills. I'm curious, why do people hate Sonya that much? She's rude and her music sucks. Yeah, her natural voice is good, but it doesn't have any emotions. She probably doesn't know anything about love and doesn't have any friends either. Those comments from the anti-fans got me thinking. I suppose I do find it hard to open up to people, and I can be a bit hot-headed sometimes, but am I really that unlikable? Ugh, not the nose again, please! Huh? Owen? First you break the cups, now you're wasting sugar. Sugar? Seriously? Aren't you even going to ask if I'm hurt? If I leave here with just a scratch, this place will be finished, you know. This place was fine until you showed up. At least, Summer, you should learn how to apologize and thank. Suddenly, the anti-fan's words echoed in my head. As Summer, Owen still saw how much of a diva I was. That means, as Sonya, I must have been so despicable. 
Um, I'm sorry. I should have thanked you for helping me. Hmm, that's okay. I'm glad you're not hurt. Don't forget Rena's reward at the counter. Take it before you go. Why do you have to pay others to badmouth Sonya? I'm only going along with all this for my sister, but it brings more customers in, so whatever. So the person behind this is Rena? I don't think so. Someone must be pulling her strings. But who? I don't know. Why are you so concerned, Summer? I was just curious. <laughs> I used to think badly about Owen, but beneath his cold front, he's kind of sweet and caring. Just like years ago. I was trying to escape the rain and bumped into him. He saved me from falling. Didn't care how sweaty I was and even gave me his umbrella. But in front of my crush, I was too shy and embarrassed to say anything and hurried off. Since then, I didn't feel so uncomfortable hearing the anti-fans slate me and our band's decline. It was almost all true anyway. At least this way, I could learn from my past mistakes and become a way better person. Flowers grow in the strangest of places, right? Yeah. These anti-fans actually became my friends. Playing with them was way more fun than with the berries somehow. Okay guys, you need to share your music with the world. So, I signed up our budding band for a local music competition. Well, what? But we're not professionals. Do you really think we can win? Who cares? I always wanted to perform on a big stage. But what are we gonna play? Use one of my songs if you want. I hear the payout is pretty good. Ooh, I love your songs! We practiced together every night, and everyone was so focused on this, they didn't post bad rumors about me anymore. Owen is truly a genius. Listening to him playing his intros always gave me goosebumps. And so, the image of a cute, talented Owen reappeared in my mind. Oh no, wake up, Sonya, you already have a boyfriend! Eric? Speaking of Eric, he's been ignoring all of my calls. I get it, he's busy rehearsing for the show, but didn't he promise to find a way to bring me back? Oh! I see. You're too busy playing bands to post anything. We have a show this weekend. You started this, didn't you, Summer? I knew you were trouble from the beginning. Get out of here. I'm on her side. Are you going to kick me out too? Don't you see I'm doing this for you? Did you forget that Eric stole your songs and used them for his debut album? Rena, don't you think I already know what you're up to? You and that Eric guy are seeing each other, right? Doesn't he want you to spread rumors so he can replace Sonya, his current girlfriend? He says if I succeed... Her place in the band will be mine. An affair is one thing, but he can't help you shine with that tuneless music. That's why I need your songs! Owen, just give me a few and everything will go smoothly. At that moment, it all became clear. The only album that made a name for the Berries was actually stolen. And worse still, the person behind my plummeting career was my own boyfriend. That jerk Eric craves fame and would never let himself get caught up in a love triangle scandal. You know how important public opinion is to him. He's using you, and as soon as you give him what he wants, he'll drop you without a thought. I'm not that easily replaceable. What do you mean, Summer? I'm sorry for lying about who I really am, but not everything is fake. I wish you could feel it. Pass my words to him. I'm out. And you, Rena? That jerk doesn't deserve any of our love or trust. Even if I didn't want to go back to being the famous Sonya, I couldn't continue to be the carefree Summer either. I didn't realize they were there. They must have heard everything. You're Sonya, not Summer? All this time? You lied to us! I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you or trick you. Your words made me want to change myself for the better. And your music taught and inspired me a lot. Caleb, Violet, June, I just want to be friends with you. Who wants to be your friend, you liar? I may have found out the truth about myself and Eric, but now I've lost my career, my friends, my boss, everything. I made such a mess of everything, and I didn't know how to fix it. I don't deserve to be Sonya, or even Summer. It must be a delivery guy. I barely had the energy to get up and open the door. Standing in front of me was... Owen? Did he come all the way here just to see me? Some... Sonya. I've been thinking a lot about your band and Eric and... I realized that this isn't your fault. You can't let Eric win. You're too talented for that. If you show everyone your true self, I just know they'll love you. Actually, there's one thing I want to confess to you. I used to have a crush on you in high school, but you probably didn't even know I existed. Really? That's so dumb. What do you mean? Actually, at that time I liked you too. You were so cute and shy with that beautiful voice. But when I came closer to talk to you, you just ran away. If I had been more confident and braver, maybe we could have become something different. What about now? I mean, do you still want to sing my song? It'll be an honor. 
Your song is always special. Owen pulled me to the competition and tenderly strapped the bass on for me. Going out there without the rest of the band seemed terrifying, but we couldn't give up. Owen was about to lead me on stage when Rena rushed over to us and grabbed my arm. Sonia, I messed up. It's true that Eric was using me, and I had been so blind to trust him that much. I've corrected the misinformation about you. I was hugging her when the rest of the anti-fans appeared. I apologized to them how I was now a better version of myself because of them. Turns out we really like Summer, so we forgive you. Now we're ready to rock the night. You can't sing with them, Sonya. That song is supposed to be the theme song in our next album. Eric, it's Owen's song, not yours. And didn't Rena tell you that I no longer give a damn about your band? I did. Seems he wasn't listening. We've published your dirty plan all over the forums, so everyone can see what a jerk you are. No, you have to come with me. Tell them you made it all up. Leave her alone. I won't let you take anything from me again. My song or my girl. She's our friend now, so excuse us. We need to get on stage and perform our song. I can't believe I'm back on stage again. Only this time, it's so much better. My bandmates are awesome. The song is amazing, and the crowd is going wild. I saw Eric shamefully disappear through the crowd. Tough luck. That's what being a big slimy liar gets you. Toward the end of the song, Owen pulled me close to him and the crowd went silent. All I could hear was the beating of my heart when he gave me the best kiss ever. I was walking through the forest when a scream startled me. A man running in horror from a pack of wolves. I quickly howled at them, then crouched down. Distracted, the wolves stopped, left the guy, and cautiously sniffed their way over to me. Hey girl, run away! Shush! After deciding I was no threat, they wagged their tails and started licking my face. Or Aren't you scared? Not at all. People often misunderstand wolves. This isn't Little Red Riding Hood. They're not actually grandma eaters. Come and make new friends, buddy. Hi, my name's Winona, an 18-year-old Native American living on the Blackfeet Reservation with my mom. And I'm about to tell you the craziest story of my life. After the wolves left, I helped the guy find a place to clean his wound and told him more about the wolves. So you're a Blackfoot born and bred? It's my first time meeting a Native American. How about you? What brings you here, city boy? I'm actually a pianist wandering here for inspiration. Have you found it yet? Or did you almost lose yourself just then? <laughs> Inspiration's hard to find, especially when you're a theater pianist. A what? A theater pianist. I work at Winter Garden. In New York? Wow, it's my dream to be a Broadway musical actress. Actually, my theater's looking for a stage crew. You could start from there, and I'll find ways to introduce you to the right people. I couldn't let such a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity slide. But the thing is, my mom absolutely resents theater arts and forbids me to even mention it. So, I gotta devise a plan. I brought Luke home for lunch. Mom was so welcoming and even prepared a great banquet. So, Luke, right? What brings you to Montana? I'm doing a research paper for school. I'm, I'm in college. Oh, so you're around the same age as Winona. She's recently finished high school. I know, and if it wasn't for Winona, I'd be dead by now. So I was thinking, if it's okay with you, I'd like to invite her to college with me. That's nice of you, but what are you studying? Uh, hotel management. Mom, I thought I could give it a try too. But honey, you said you wanted to take a gap year. I just didn't want to try college alone. But now I've met Luke, it'll be different. Mrs. Ryder, I promise I'll take good care of her. Mom smiled, then nodded. Yes! Mission accomplished! Oh man, look at how crazy the streets of New York are. Thankfully, Luke arranged a small place just a few blocks away from the theater for me. And the following day, he landed me a staff member job to get me used to the theater scene first. It's not easy, especially working for a grumpy director with a zillion demands. Hey, you! Yes, you cleaning lady! Out of the way! But just being here this close to the stage is incredible, right? One day, on set for Mr. Killorn's new play, he started yelling and throwing papers everywhere. Curious, I picked up the script and saw a line written in Blackfoot. Ketsi kakumen? I love you? Mr. Killorn suddenly noticed me. Oops, I must have said it too loud. How did you learn to speak Blackfoot? My mom taught me. Oh, I live in the Blackfeet Reservation. Interesting. You know what? You're cast for the leading role in this play. Go and meet Jade, the coach, here at the theater studio. She'll instruct you further. 
I froze on the spot and couldn't believe what had just happened until Luke appeared, bowed to the director and pulled me out of there. Am I finally living my dream now? Here it is, the studio from the business card. Huh? Are they shooing a coyote? This stupid guy was waving his umbrella at the snarling animal. I tried to tell everyone to back up, but no one heard my tiny voice until the guy next to me suddenly spoke up. Everyone, back up! Thank God people finally listened. I slowly advanced to the coyote, knelt, and offered my hand to him. When he seemed to trust me enough, I gently stroked his head and calmed him down. Just then, Mr. Killorn's assistant appeared and took the coyote in. Turned out, he's Mr. Killorn's pet. Who keeps a wild creature as a pet in this stuffy, urban space? You okay? You hurt anywhere? I'm fine. The poor little coyote looked terrified. You know a lot about animals, don't you? I grew up with them, yeah. In Blackfoot mythology, coyotes are guardian spirits. Well, you sure were a guardian spirit right then. I was still so touched by his words, but then Luke suddenly appeared. Winona, I just heard about what happened. You okay? What are you doing here? The guy, who was friendly just a second ago, now seemed cautious and just walked away while Luke glared at him. I'm fine. You should stay away from him. Hmm. Luke doesn't seem to like that guy. Something weird is going on between these two? I went and met Jade, our coach. She told me about the role and introduced me to Nathan, my actor partner, which happened to be the guy I just met. I couldn't help but grin and offered my hand to Nathan, but he just ignored me and turned to the script. Hello? Am I just a stranger danger now? We then tried the opening act, but since it was my first time being on a turntable, I took the wrong step and fell over. Nathan! I was blushing when he suddenly glanced at Luke and dropped me, almost kissing the floor. Right then, a girl barged in. Is everything ready for my set? You're late again, Stella. And actually, you and Winona are both gonna practice and we'll see who's right for the role. Winona who? As if this nobody can stroll in and try to steal my role? How snobby. She's lucky this nobody doesn't want to make a scene on her first day. During the break, I questioned Luke more on Stella. Stella is super talented. She's marvelous at dancing, singing, and acting. No surprise though, cause she's been training since she was little. That's exactly why we should just give her the role already. A waste of time dealing with amateurs. That was so rude. So much for ever thinking he was friendly. In the following weeks, I finally got a better grasp of my character. The female lead was a gentle, down-to-earth Blackfoot woman. Easy peasy, I just need to pretend to be my mom. <laughs> Only, my on-scene love interest Nathan was making things difficult. On stage, he refused to make eye contact with me, but he didn't have this trouble when he was up there with Stella. Every day I had lunch with Luke while Nathan and Stella were giggling in another corner, acting as if they were the most powerful couple here. Are they really in love? Oh, Winona, please. Why should you care? After lunch, I ignored Stella's glaring eyes and focused on being Nathan's lover on stage. What kind of singing is that? Give me a break already. That's enough, Stella. Actually, I just informed Mr. Killorn over lunch that Winona's getting the role. Ha! Huh, very funny. No, it's not a joke. Look at your performance recently, Stella. It's rather disappointing. Winona, keep up the good work. Stella looked like she'd had the blood sucked out of her. I excitedly beamed at Luke, but strangely he looked concerned and ran after Stella. Does he have feelings for her? See that? Why hasn't he just confessed his feelings for Stella already and stopped this unrequited love tragedy? Isn't it because you and Stella are together? And that's also why you're so half-hearted whenever you're on set with me? It's not like that. I just couldn't control myself every time our eyes met. What did he mean by that? Congrats, anyways. I always knew you deserved this role. He's right. I really worked super hard for this. I'm so close to achieving my dream now. The next day, I rushed into the first official rehearsal and acted my heart out in front of Mr. Killorn and the whole crew. I was dancing away to Luke's sentimental track when the door slammed open. It was, Mom! I can't believe you lied to me and came here to do these foolish antics. Oh, no. Mr. Killorn turned pale while Jade gasped upon seeing Mum. I tried to tell them to let me finish the scene, but... Fine, be this way. Until you come to your senses, you're not my daughter anymore. Mum then stormed out of there. Mr. Killorn told everyone to take a break and also left. I stormed over to Luke and asked if he told my mum the truth. But right when he was stammering, Mr. Killorn came between us. I didn't know you had to lie to your mum to get here. 
Yeah, sadly. She knows about my acting dream, but she has always been so negative about it. Hmm, is that so? Well, you're doing a great job. Continue practicing for the play, and maybe take me to your mom sometime and I'll try and explain this to her. Encouraged by the director's feedback, the next day I confidently acted my part. Yet Jade seemed dissatisfied and criticized my movements, saying they were too rigid. Winona, I'm giving the role to Stella. You need more training. What? I'm not some toy you can throw back and forth. Was it all just a show to get me and her to pit against each other? What was that about? Why the change? You're not qualified. Go back to your mother. What has this to do with my mother? I didn't know what was going on, but I was sure of one thing. I needed to prove myself, so I stayed at the studio practicing, swinging, and swaying my soul away under the studio light until I accidentally sprained my ankle. Right then, Nathan came out and helped me up. Why are you still here? I saw you stay, so I thought I'd stick around for a little longer. As he spoke, he gently pressed an ice bag on my ankle. I felt the butterflies flapping in my stomach, but suddenly remembered his attitude before and pushed him away. Ready to stand up, just to fall into his embrace again. You must think I'm so hot and cold, but I just didn't want Luke to misunderstand anything. What do you mean? We're just friends. And what's up with you and Luke? Then he told me how he and Stella were the best of friends back at acting school, until Luke appeared. Luke was instantly attracted to Stella, and asked Nathan to set them up. Nathan, of course, happily agreed. However, the next day Stella suddenly expressed her feelings for Nathan right in front of Luke. Luke didn't take it too well, and thought I was messing with him. He's resented me ever since. So, you and Stella are just friends? We are. Stella might appear childish, but she's good-natured. She's just… she's dealing with a lot inside. I've just been watching over her. But right now, she's gonna have to learn to stand on her own since I think I've met my guardian spirit. His guardian spirit? We were so close, I swear we were almost kissing. But I quickly pulled away, saying I gotta go practice. The final rehearsal is my only chance to get my role back now. I showed up just as a substitute today, but when everybody was ready to rehearse, the only person missing was Stella. No one seemed able to contact her, and the director was growing impatient. Jade had no other choice but to push me onto the stage. Luke didn't seem too happy with this replacement, and suddenly played the piano much faster than expected. Flustered, I took a deep breath and let myself float naturally to his rhythm. During the intermission, I asked Luke what that was about. Drop it, Winona. I already knew. You got in here all thanks to your director dad, yet you fooled me with your little story. It's you who forced Stella away from her chosen role. Who's my dad? Mr. Killorn? Right then I was called for the next act. Still puzzled by what Luke said, I couldn't focus on my part with Nathan. Suddenly I heard Nathan scream my name and leapt to push me to the side. I fell on the floor and saw the massive chandelier land on Nathan. Everybody rushed to check on us and among the crowd came, Mom? We were all waiting for the doctor to check on Nathan when Luke suddenly spoke out. I'm sorry for what I said, but Jade told me Mr. Killorn is your dad and you guys forced Stella to drop her role. Mr. Killorn and I both gave Mom astounded eyes. Winona's my… my daughter? That's right, Andrew. But don't worry, as soon as Nathan's recovered, I'll bring Winona back home and will not bother you and Jade again. No, no, you've got it all wrong. Why didn't you tell me about our daughter? Jade said if I told you, she would harm Winona. Wait, does this have anything to do with the accident? Cause right before the act, I saw Jade talking to a crew member who set up the stage for Nathan and Winona. I'll get this looked into at once. So, this play about Andrew and a Blackfoot woman falling in love, is it about you and Mom? Mr. Killorn didn't reply, but looked at Mom tenderly, and she burst out crying. Right then, the doctor came out, saying we could visit Nathan. Luke quickly pulled me aside, leaving the adults there. How are you feeling? Any discomfort? You're not mad at me anymore? Yeah, um, sorry for being a jerk. It's alright, dude. Go find Stella before she leaves. She said she was sick of being thrown around. She's taking a leave to reassess a few things. But why me? Aren't you? We're just friends. How many times do I have to tell you? Luke didn't even wait for Nathan to finish and rushed out of there. I wish them a happy ending. And it's indeed happy endings all round. Not only for Luke and Stella who are now officially an item, but also for Mom and Mr. Killorn. Or should I say, Dad? Our family has finally reunited. On the other hand, Jade vanished as soon as her schemes were out in the open. Turns out, all of this was because she'd been in love with my dad for years. 
So back when mom was dating dad, she told her lies about him to get her to leave. Furious that both mom and I were back, she decided to make us go for good. Dad helped me get a spot in the theater academy in New York, but he misses mom lots, so always makes excuses to bring me and Nathan back to Montana. You guys need more inspiration, right? New York's just all hustle and bustle. So, how about we move the studio back here? Nathan, what do you think? I don't know, but wherever you are, that's where I'll be. Hi, I'm Kate, and I'm doing something totally thrilling. I'm running away. Just picturing my parents' worried faces makes me smile. Why, you ask? They deserve it for trying to send me, their beloved only daughter, to some disgusting girls' boarding school. Yuck! No parties, the grossest uniform, bossy supervisors, and no hot-muscled guys! Ugh! That place is for nerds, not me, an it girl and the founder of Clique Chic, our school's exclusive group for the hottest, most sought-after girls. To be a part of the club, you must be really fashionable, you know? I'm talking about a wardrobe full of the latest designer must-haves, manicured nails, and the glossiest hair. Only girls as dazzling as us can make the school hallway our catwalk stage. As one of us, your life will be filled with endless parties and super cute jocks fighting for your attention. Studying and homework? <laughs> That's not our thing. Those loser nerds who are chasing after us will take care of it. Hey, do you know those people? I looked outside and saw a group of bodyguards who were yelling and trying to force my cab to stop. Ugh, this was so uncalled for. 500 bucks if you can get rid of them. The driver immediately sped up. <laughs> Ordinary people will do anything for a little bit of money. He dropped me off at a service station and I quickly snuck inside and hid in the restrooms. Ew, this place was gross. Gosh, those bodyguards were loitering about outside so no one could leave or enter without them seeing. How tragic. This was so stupid. All my parents needed to do was let me stay at home for the summer. But no, they sent those bodyguards after me to ruin my life. Suddenly, a cubicle door flung open and knocked into me. Ouch! Are you blind? What are those glasses even for? I... I'm sorry. The girl quickly apologized, then she bent down to pick her fallen stuff up. But when she looked up, I gasped in shock. Holy guacamole! What in the world?! She looked exactly like me. I mean, at least her face did. Her style was disgusting and old-fashioned. Ew. But given my dire situation, I came up with an amazing idea. Okay, so this is weird. Do you want to make some money? And I mean a lot of money? She gave me this dumbfounded look. Ew. I hope I didn't get frown lines like she did when I screwed up my face. They were ghastly. I have a really lucrative job for you. As you can see, we have similar faces. Freaky, but fortunate. So I need you to pretend to be me and live my rich life for a month or two. Here's my Twitter account. Just skim through it. You can learn everything about me there. It should be enough for you to play the part and avoid my family's suspicion. And here's your payment. I rifled through my bag and handed her the rest of the cash. Jeez, this must be a huge amount for her, as her eyes lit up like she was seeing money for the first time, and she immediately took it. We quickly exchanged clothes, and as instructed, she went outside to hand herself over to the bodyguards. Ah, freedom! Now bring on one long, hot summer of fun. But first, I have to go shopping. Wearing these old-fashioned, disgusting clothes made me want to puke. Oh no! My parents have locked all of my credit cards! I can't even buy a soya milk ice latte now! Oof! How could my parents be so cruel? The worst part is, I had stupidly given all my cash and my phone to that girl! With no other options left, I reluctantly searched the girl's bag. A few old-fashioned clothes, some stupid books, 
and an unbranded lipstick? Huh? Was that all? How can people live like this? But, hmm, what's this? In her small notebook was a train ticket and an offer letter to work at Homestay Allen. So, looks like she's going there for a summer job. Hopefully that homestay has a bath with scented candles and a pool for me to sunbathe by. I need to work on my tan. I was glad to get off that flea-ridden thing and breathe in some fresh air. Hmm, now where was my ride? There was a short, chubby old man holding a board with the name Clara on it. Ah, the name on the train ticket was Clara. So this meant he was here for me? Ugh, he didn't even have flowers with him and he could have at least combed his hair. So, turns out, that's Danny, the manager and owner of the homestay. Honestly, if it wasn't for the circumstances, I would never have set foot in this stupid place. Oh, how the day got worse. Without even being allowed to rest my weary feet, Danny gave me work. Housekeeping. It was a joke, wasn't it? My nails were not made for menial jobs. Life here was horrible. I had to get up so stupidly early that it was still dark out, then clean a dozen dusty old bedrooms. After that, I would do the laundry, dry the towels and bedding, fold them, and arrange them neatly into each room. At noon, I also had to help the chef here, Anna, prepare lunch, and I was also forced to wash a mountain of gross dishes. I had never done such silly chores like this at home, Instead, they were always done for me. Didn't expect them to be this exhausting. <laughs> you should put them in order, so they won't break. Ugh, where did this nosy guy come from? Are you lecturing me? I replied crankily and walked away. Suddenly... Oh no, this was the ninth time I'd broken stuff since I'd arrived here. And that wasn't counting my poor broken nails. I quickly bent down to clean up, but... Ouch! I cut my finger on one of the pieces. The guy quickly ran over and bandaged my wound. Bond, that's my name. Huh? What's this? Did he just wink at me? My heart was pounding. Um, I mean, he was cute. Yeah, he was really cute. Um, I'm K... Clara. Go do something else. Leave this to me. Realizing that I'd been staring at Bond for a while, I hurriedly got up and rushed to the kitchen. Nice to meet you, Clara. I'm your new colleague. Well, that's not so bad. At least I have someone to share my workload with and... to chat. The next morning, I was cleaning the floor, half asleep, when Bond came over, put an AirPod in my ear, and winked at me. Imagine you're dancing, then you won't feel so tired anymore. Okay, this sounded kinda lame, but at least no one else was around to see me, so I decided to just go with it. So, I gave it a try, with Bond, <laughs> and I relaxed a little. Well, I didn't expect it to be so much fun. That night, as I was about to turn off the light, I heard a knock at the door. It was Bond. He wanted to show me a secret. So he took my hand and led me to the beach. Yes, we were holding hands, and his hand was really warm. He took me to a sandy beach and shone his flashlight at his feet. Something was moving under the fine white sand. Ew! What was that? I clung to his arm in fear. Aww, little turtles, I exclaimed as they slowly emerged from under the sand. Yes, they're cute, aren't they? Let's give them a hand. They have to get to the sea before dawn. I hesitated because I thought this was so stupid. When the sun rises, they'll be easily spotted and eaten by predators. Fine. Since Bond pleaded, I had no choice but to sacrifice my sleep to escort the baby turtles to the sea. Why would their mom just abandon her babies like that? Their mom protected them when they were eggs, and now it's time for them to start fending for themselves. I bet they don't mind. You see, they're all trying their best to crawl towards the sea. But it was us who helped them. Then they'll be very grateful to you. And so am I. 
Whoa, I'd never felt like this before. It felt like my heart was aching, but in a good way? Thinking about it, I suppose this was the first time I'd ever helped anyone before. Now I kinda understood why my parents did what they did. They just wanted me to be more independent and stop hanging around with those vain, show-off girls. They sure would be pleased if they could see me now, with this sweet and gentle guy. He was the total opposite of the rich boys back home. When I was hurt, he made sure I was okay. He opened my eyes to new experiences, and he didn't try to impress me with dumb flowers and expensive gifts. I've been thinking about Bond all day, and this is the 1,001st time I've peeked at him. I think I'll have to confess my feelings before I go crazy. So that evening, after finishing all my work, I knocked on Bond's door. Huh? Why was a teary-eyed Miss Anna standing there? Then she told me the shocking truth. Bond had left without saying goodbye. Panicked, I walked into the room, but there was nothing left of his. Nothing! No! This couldn't be happening! I hadn't even had a chance to confess yet! The next day, I felt so down, it sucked not having Bond here. But then in my zombie state, I accidentally picked up the newspaper at the front desk. O-M-G. On the front page was a picture of... Bond! God, I couldn't believe it. He was the son of a famous billionaire and they were looking for him. Turns out, I wasn't the only one who'd run away from home. But why did he leave so suddenly? He could have told me the truth. He could have said bye. Ugh! My untold feelings for him felt like an unreachable splinter in my side. I couldn't carry on like this. I needed to find Bond. With my meager salary, I got on the train back to the city, imagining seeing Bond again. This is without a doubt the most nervous I'd ever been in my entire life. It didn't matter how much I pleaded my case and explained that I was Bond's friend. The security guards refused to let me in. <sighs> I was about to leave when suddenly I saw Bond from afar. He was with a girl. What in the world is this? I tried to strain my eyes to see. My God, isn't that me? No. It's the girl I hired to pretend to be me. What was she doing with Bond? And why did they look so close? Could it be? Yes, it's me, Kate, here again. When I traded places with my doppelganger to avoid being stuck in some ghastly summer school, I didn't expect to end up penniless and having to work in some dusty old homestay. But I suppose it wasn't all bad, as I got to meet Bond. So imagine my surprise when I discovered that not only was he a runaway rich kid like me, but I also caught him hanging out with moi. Well, the other me. Ugh. I hired her to pretend to be me, not to be with my man. Um, looks like it was time to return to my normal life. Miss, without a letter of invitation, I can't let you in. Are you kidding me? Why do I need an invitation to enter my own home? How could they not recognize me? Right at that moment, Clara gracefully got out of a luxury car and entered my house. I shouted over to her, but on seeing me, she gave me a confused look. Then she whispered something to the security guard and went straight inside. Sorry, Miss Kate doesn't know you. Please leave. Huh? How dare she? She wasn't Miss Kate. I was. Did she really think she could treat me like this? Ugh! I'd show her who the real rich girl was. But as I was leaving, I caught a glimpse of myself in a car window. Oh my gosh. I looked horrendous. My once bouncy curls, perfectly made up face, and glamorous clothing were no more. Instead, I had a greasy ponytail, my skin was completely bare, and I was in worn old clothes. 
No wonder the security guards didn't recognize me. I barely recognized my own self. Well, well, well. How comfortable it is to be back in my room, doll up again, and just take back what's mine. How did you get in here? This is my room, remember? I can run away by myself, so you bet I can sneak back into my own room. Listen here, fake me. Mission's over. It's time you left. What mission? Are you crazy? Get your filthy hands off my stuff! Wow, immerse yourself in the role much, huh? Enough. Now give me my life back. What if I don't? Don't you dare. You think my parents won't recognize me? Seeing as I've been impersonating you for an entire month without question, I doubt it. Besides, they're on a month-long business trip in Dubai. So, who will help you now, huh? O-M-G. She was so arrogant, unruly, and obnoxious. Worst of all, she reminded me of someone. Me! Well, the old me. Why didn't I realize before how awful I actually was? Ignoring Clara's defiant face, I took out my phone and made a FaceTime call to my parents. They had to spot it was me straight away, right? Wrong. They gave us both looks of shocked confusion, and they couldn't seem to tell us apart. So they told the two of us to stay at home for the time being while they made arrangements to come back. Huh, is it that hard to distinguish your own daughter from a hick? But anyway, she'll be out of here soon enough. The next morning, we went back to school. Claire looked so trashy in her tiny miniskirt. Jeez, this wasn't a nightclub. Oh, Kate, you look outstanding. Where did you buy it from? <laughs> That's it. My friends will always be able to tell me apart from a fraud. But hang on. No! They were moving toward... Clara! Huh? Are they actually praising her? Wow, there's another Kate here. But it's a faulty version. A lame one. <laughs> My panicked feeling increased as all my friends and Clara burst out laughing. You guys don't recognize me? I'm the real Kate, the one you all idolize, the trendsetter around here. Everyone looked at me in bewilderment and then back to Clara. Look at her pathetic appearance. She's just trying to be a copy of me. After that, Clara and her friends left. Jeez. All it took was one summer away for Clara to turn into me. Ugh! Why doesn't anyone recognize me? Seeing Clara living my life with my friends was driving me crazy. I was now seen as the copycat version of my own self. Ugh! No way was I losing to this crafty charlatan. So the next day, I decided to show everyone how charismatic I was. After all, form is temporary but class is permanent. And soon, everyone would realize who the real Kate was. Right? <laughs> I waited until Clara was out of the way, then I went over to my group and started recalling some of our old stories that only the real me could possibly know. When Clara returned, oh my, she looked furious. <laughs> One day, when I just entered the cafeteria, I saw my group making a nerdy girl run errands for them. Poof, your mother is the school's measly janitor. So you two are just our dog's body. Now hurry up and go get us some ketchup. When the girl was bringing it to them, one of them tripped her foot and made her face fall down on the plate of sauce. The whole group burst into laughter. I rushed to help her up and scowled at the clique chic girls. <sighs> they may have looked stylish, but beneath it all, they were monsters. But worst of all, it was my fault, as it was my group. I'd basically created them. What's wrong with her mom being a janitor? That doesn't mean she has to serve you guys. As I can see, all of your legs and arms are working fine. So go get stuff yourself. Wow, look who it is. Do you all believe she's just a lousy replica of mine now? The true clique chic Kate wouldn't blurt out such nonsense. Clique chic all looked me up and down, then gave me disgusted looks. Too much of a saint. 
What a hypocrite. Kate would never say that. Obviously, she's the fake one. Those whispers made me so angry that I turned as red as the ketchup. Fine. Pretend to be me all you want. But you and I both know I'm the real me. And I'm better than ever. You won't be able to keep up that act for much longer. And then to the surprise of the others, I stormed off. That night, social media was awash with my news. Can you believe I was actually being mocked for being the copycat while Clara was being praised? Talk about ridiculous. I scrolled through my old photos and scanned over some of the thousands of likes and compliments. I'd lived in the admiration of everyone. Ugh. Maybe I needed to go back to being the arrogant and snobby old Kate, and then everything would be over. Right? <sighs> Only, I couldn't do it. I couldn't be that heartless and selfish version of myself anymore. So how could I end this whole mess of my own making? Ah, there was another way. If there's only one Kate who showed up, there wouldn't be any more fakers. Oh, seems like it's going to be a really good day at school today. But such a shame that our sweet Clara might not be able to join us. Everyone greeted me warmly as they thought that the imposter who was smeared on social media yesterday had been too embarrassed to show her face. Even so, I didn't want to hang out with these stuck-up mean girls anymore. The clique chic group should be disbanded. As I was deep in thoughts, out of nowhere, a nerd blocked my way with a bouquet of flowers. He timidly held them out to me, and people began buzzing and pointing. The girls in the group took pictures of him and urged me forward. That's our Kate with her irresistible charms. <laughs> someone's essay's ready for next week. I hesitated, not knowing what to say. I didn't want to accept love from someone I didn't like. People started to frown at my silence. Then a few voices of doubt arose. Why doesn't she accept the bouquet as usual? Perhaps she's not? I saw red. Suddenly, I found this whole pretending to flirt with someone just to have them do our homework absurd. And above all else, it wasn't fair to him. You don't have the guts to do it, do you? Because you're not Kate. Startled, I turned around to see Clara taking the bouquet of flowers from the nerd's hand. I snatched it back angrily. He likes me, not you. He likes Kate, and I'm Kate. That Clara was just so shameless to say that. Did she really think she could be me? Did she think being mean and snobby made her the it girl? How shallow of her. Yes, if it was Kate from the past, I would have received that bouquet and made him do my homework. But the present Kate won't do that. Do it yourself. Stop relying on others to do everything for you. As for you, Clara, let me tell you this. Despite your best efforts, you'll never be me. Once a liar, always a liar, you counterfeit. I was done here. I was the real me. And if they couldn't see that, then whatever. So I walked away. Suddenly, a hand pulled me back. It was the nerd. Sorry, but... I really don't like you in that way. You really don't have feelings for me? Are you sure? Upon his words, he took off his wig, glasses, and the mole on his face. Bond? Is it really you? I was so shocked that I couldn't believe my eyes. Bond handed me the bouquet and said, You won't say no, will you? Of course, how could I say no? I led him to an empty classroom to talk. Um, why are you here? And what's with the disguise? After I left the homestay, I went back home. My parents did what they always do, and tried to make out like money could solve everything by throwing an extravagant party. I was lingering out of the way when, to my surprise, you walked in with your family. Huh? What party? Oh, he must mean Clara. He continued, I went over to talk to you, but you acted like you'd never met me before, so it didn't take me long to work out this girl wasn't you. I was worried, so I called the homestay and they said you'd left. 
determined to solve this mystery, I went to your school and found everyone was in a frenzy, as out of nowhere two Kates had appeared. Both of them were it girls and nothing like the homestay Kate I knew. So in order to suss out the real one, I disguised myself. And my plan worked, as here you are. You're such a trickster! <laughs> but I still have one question. Why did you suddenly leave the homestay that day? So, turns out his passion for marine life led him to run away from his disapproving parents and go to a coastal homestay. Only, when he realized from the newspaper that his parents were looking for him, he didn't want to get the homestay into trouble, so he returned home. You should have at least said goodbye to me. I was so down when you left like that. Did you know that? Kate, I'm truly sorry. I never meant to upset you. Actually, I'm kind of crazy about you. After that, Bond drove me home. And guess what? Looks like my parents were back earlier than expected. As for the fake Clara, she'd already fled the scene with a load of my clothes and makeup. But, ugh, whatever. At least she'd finally gone. So, what now? Well, I'm dating Bond, and I'm so happy with him. At weekends, I go to the coast and help him with his marine animal research, which is actually a lot of fun. And I don't even mind having salty air lips. <laughs> I never take my parents for granted anymore, and I never force other students to carry out dumb errands for me. And of course, Clique Chic was no longer a thing. Everyone at school had grown used to the new and improved version of me. Obviously, I'll always be the it girl who sets the trends, but only the decent ones. Hmm, I wonder what's taking Valerie so long? She's been in that changing room for ages. Valerie, is everything okay in there? Don't force it if it doesn't fit. No, this is the last dress in store. I just need to breathe in for a bit longer. So? It's beautiful, isn't it? Valerie spun around. Then suddenly... Yep. Trying to squeeze into a dress two sizes too small for her, then it split. <sighs> the giggles around us started. Valerie blushed, hurriedly paid for the dress, and pulled me out of the shop. Why am I so fat? Ugh! I just want to feel pretty on my date. If I was skinny like you, I wouldn't have this problem. Poof! You know, it's not as easy as you think being thin. Yep, you heard me right. Being thin has its downsides. First of all, fashion. My nightmare. I have to wear an extra small size, and the clothes still hang off me. Actually, most of my clothes are from kids' stores, so I feel so untrendy. Then in winter, I have to wear tons of layers just so I don't freeze to death. And in the summer... <sighs> I can't wear cute clothes as I look like a coat hanger. Not only that, because I'm so skinny, people often ask me to do nonsense stuff. Once, I was studying in my room when suddenly I heard my sister Camilla calling me. She'd forgotten her keys and forced me to climb through her tiny window gap to get them. Seriously, I can't even... Then, on another occasion, Valerie made me crawl into the classroom locker to help her cheat on her Spanish test. Unfortunately, the teacher walked in while this was happening and gave me a week's worth of detentions, of course. Ugh! Oh my god, No Way Home is so good. I literally can't think of one bad thing to say about it. Yep, the part near the end? Ah! Yep, guess what? I'd managed to trap my foot in a manhole. Man, what rotten luck. I tried pulling my leg free, but it was no use. It wouldn't budge. There I was, freaking out that I'd be stuck here forever, and all my friends could do was huddle together and ask me questions like, Madeline, how on earth did you get your foot in such a small slot? Wow, that's unbelievable. 
Even Jaden, my bookworm friend, took out a ruler from his backpack and started measuring how wide the slot was. Grrr. My dear friends, I'm being stuck down here. Stop gopping and help me! Finally, they tried helping me out, but in the end, we had to call the rescue squad. By this point, a massive crowd had gathered around me, and strangers were filming me. When I was finally free, everyone looked at me and held back their laughter. Even Parker, my crush, was smiling. Jeez, this was beyond embarrassing. But a hot guy like Parker would never notice a moving skeleton like me anyway. <sighs> Don't think like that, Maddie. You're so pretty. Show me some confidence, would you? Valerie said as she nudged my arm. I put the book down and glared at her, and suddenly noticed Parker walking towards our table, smiling. And, yep, he said he wanted to sit with us. Even though I was cheering inside of my head, I still had to act composed. And, oh my god, can you believe he even said I was cute? After that day, Valerie kept on encouraging me, saying he had definitely given me a green light. So, finally, I gathered my courage to write down all my feelings for Parker on a note and clipped it to his notebook. At the end of class that day, he came to my desk and took my hand. Yay! Everything was fine, great even, until one day... When the two of us were taking a romantic walk past the Swan Lake, Parker suddenly turned to me and said, You're so beautiful, Maddie. And if you just put on a few more pounds, I swear you'll be the hottest girl at school. Yes, I know. But it's hard for me to gain weight. No big deal. Just leave it to me. I'll fatten you up. I thought Parker was just joking, but it turns out he was being deadly serious. Since that day, every time we went on a date, instead of taking me to the bowling alley and movies as usual, Parker would take me out to eat. I swear, I've tried all the restaurants in our town. More surprisingly, on my birthday, Parker even gave me a bouquet of fried chicken. How romantic! But this didn't change anything, as my weight still stayed the same. Parker was disappointed when he peered over me and saw the scales hadn't budged. Then he sighed out. How come you and Valerie are friends, but look totally opposite? Here comes our adorable, chubby Valerie. What? Parker called Valerie adorable again. This wasn't the first time either. Annoyed, I put down my fork and walked away from them. After that, I started avoiding Valerie. I did homework with other friends, sat with other girls at lunch, and every time I happened to see Valerie, I turned around and walked away. Honestly, I didn't want it to be this way, but just seeing her made me uncomfortable. But I couldn't bear to see my boyfriend call my BFF cute while he thought I was too skinny. <sighs> then summer break finally rolled around. I thought it'd be just me and Parker, but then he went off to a summer camp in Spain. <sighs> the plan was all ruined. So, I spent a whole sunny day inside sulking. What's wrong? Are you bored because your lover is away? So why don't you take this time to surprise him when he returns? Surprise? A great idea popped into my head. But, but how do I get chubby? Easy peasy. Okay, if it's that easy, then show me. Okay, if you'd do my summer homework for me. What? She's such an opportunist. But I really wanted to pile on the pounds and please Parker. So, without hesitation, I nodded in agreement. So, from that day on, I started following Camilla's weight gain plan. I switched veggies for greasy foods, and my main meal was always late at night. I also changed water for milkshakes but I did have to stop drinking them when the smell of milk alone made me feel sick. Seeing me eating crazy like that, my parents worriedly said, Madeline, eating healthily is important, else your health will be affected. But I ignored their advice. 
This time, I definitely had to gain weight. Finally, after a month of trying, I gained some weight. Yay! I looked a lot more attractive now, didn't I? I was studying myself in the mirror when I heard my phone beep. It was Parker. He was coming over tomorrow with a present for me. The next day, I put on this hot dress that I'd never felt confident enough to wear before, and I asked Camilla to help me do my makeup. As soon as I finished, I eagerly waited for Parker in the living room. The doorbell rang. I excitedly opened the door. But as soon as he saw me, Parker quickly said, Oh, sorry. I have the wrong house. Then he started to leave. Huh? He didn't recognize me? This will be fun. No, honey, you're not mistaken. It's me. Your destiny. Madeline? Is that really you? Oh my, how on earth can you be this big? We've only been apart for a month. So, you don't think I'm prettier now? To my surprise, Parker shook his head. No, no, you're so fat now, it doesn't look okay. Lose some weight. Huh? This was so confusing. I thought he wanted me to be bigger. As annoying as this was, I still listened to Parker and tried to lose the weight I'd put on. <sighs> so, it turns out that losing weight is far trickier than it sounds. Actually, it's a million times harder to lose it than it is to gain it. After a month of healthy eating and exercise, I gained another pound. Ugh! Stop eating that. Are you giving up already? You must try harder. What? It's just some popcorn. Why does he have to be so rude about this? I'll give you two weeks to lose weight. Else we're done. Huh? What did he just say? Done? He was the one who wanted me to gain weight in the first place. Now he was threatening to break up with me if I didn't lose it. How ridiculous. You know what? I don't need two weeks. Let's end it right now. It's clear you never loved me at all. You only like my appearance. If you truly cared about me, you wouldn't care what size I was. Then I walked off. Ugh, how could I have been so stupid? For the entirety of my relationship with that jerk Parker, I was blindly following him. I only cared about pleasing him, and it cost me so many things, including my best friend. I needed to apologize to her right away. I nervously knocked on the door, then waited. Finally, Valerie opened it, but on seeing me, she went to shut it. I'm so sorry. Just let me explain, please. Valerie, I'm so sorry. It was all because I was afraid Parker would leave me for you. But I realize now that he's a massive jerk and I was an idiot for ever trying to change for him. Jeez, you're crazy. Parker is totally not my type. I scratched my head and told her about how terrible Parker had treated me and how I'd foolishly listened to him. Man, that douchebag! Then she hugged me. Valerie confessed to me that she'd been trying to lose weight by lowering her calorie intake, but the pounds were coming off. And worse still... She felt weak and tired all the time. I nodded in agreement with her. So, from then on, Valerie and I made a promise to love ourselves, regardless of what size we were, and to never let anyone try and change us. And look, that's Walker and Joel, our awesome boyfriends who love us just the way we are. And you know what? It feels so good not caring what other people think. So, don't ever let idiots put you down. Because when you allow yourself to just be you, then you can finally realize just how beautiful you truly are. Hey, welcome to my coffee booth at Felton High's Flea Market. Just a second, I need to add the finishing touches to this latte. Perfect. Guys, try this. It's the special drink that I came up with for our two-month anniversary, which, FYI, is today. How romantic. What's the name of this drink? I think Patrick should name it. 
We can call that Paige's vom. You know, because it reminds me of when we were five and you threw up in the back of my mom's car during our road trip. <laughs> Stop! I'm not kidding. Me neither. It's one of my favorite memories, as that's when I fell deeply in love with you. Or how about, why is everything a joke to you? Just leave. We're done. I'm sorry about that. Ugh, let's start over. I'm Paige, and everyone calls me Perfect Paige because, well, everything about me is perfect. That must be thanks to my parents. My dad's a hospital director, and my mom's a university president. They both excel in their jobs, juggle family affairs, never quarrel, and always have smiles on their faces. And me, I'm beautiful, smart, and have some talents, such as making drinks. My dream is to run my own coffee shop on the side of the dream job at the national TV station that I will definitely get. Then I'll come home to my dream boyfriend who's a flawless man that I can count on. And we'll have a perfect love story like my parents. Then why did I choose that funny guy as my boyfriend, you ask? Ugh. Before he became my now ex, Patrick was a close friend since childhood. We lived in the same neighborhood and... It was my friend Doris's birthday, but she came up with a stupid condition that all the girls had to bring along a boy. Ugh, please. This sounded ridiculous, so I presumed it was a joke and showed up alone. Only everyone else had a plus one with them. Paige, you need to stop being so picky and give a guy a chance. How about your bestie Patrick? He's nice, smart, great at basketball, and he's pretty cute, right? No, 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 we go way back. He's all right, I guess, but that's not enough. I, there's no one on this planet who can reach your ridiculously high standards. He's the best you're gonna get, and look, he's also so funny. Patrick's sense of humor is by far his most infuriating trait. Fine, perfect Paige, you'll just have to show up to the prom alone then. And I doubt that's a perfect thing to do. I guess Doris's words played on my mind, cause when Patrick walked me home, I blurted out, hey, if we're both single after we turn 17, then let's date. Then my perfect school year will end with a perfect prom night with my high school sweetheart, just like in a rom-com. Huh? Have you eaten too much frosting or something? No, of course not. I just can't possibly turn up to prom dateless. Oh, the outrage. As if anyone could ever dare to go to prom without a date. But I'm not just anyone. Such a humiliating thing would be a scratch on the diamond, which is me. Okay, okay, I'll do whatever you want. Time passed by and I concentrated on my studies and my hobby. Then before I knew it, I turned 17 and still didn't have a boyfriend. I heard this strange noise coming from my balcony. Patrick? What is he doing with a rose in his mouth? Hey there, do you remember our oath once upon a time? Okay, fine. From today, I allow you to be my boyfriend. Go home and get ready. Tonight will be our first date. Wait, you serious? It's not a joke. Why are you always joking? All right, all right. Where does my love want to go on our first date? So we started dating and so far so good. Seeing as he'd known me for years, he knew what I liked and what I was thinking. He never argued with me and just did what I asked. And best of all, everyone complimented us and said we were a match made in heaven. There was just one problem. Patrick's sense of humor was ruining the romantic vibe. So that brings us to the present and why I ended our relationship. Later that night, Patrick called and apologized, but I confirmed that the breakup was still on as I didn't want to cause strain to our friendship. He seemed pretty surprised by this, but Patrick being Patrick, he soon made light of it. Back to the friend zone. Alrighty. So no need to pick up Paige every morning anymore. Nice. See you in math class. For some reason, I was a little sad that he'd agreed to do this so quickly, but it had just been a dumb fling anyway, right? But hang on, what about prom? I couldn't lose face with my friends, so I joined a dating app to continue the search for my Prince Charming. Ugh, too short, too nerdy, too glary. And after days of desperately swiping, I finally found a guy that caught my eye. I mean, I couldn't really see his face, but he had to be hot. I messaged him right away, and you know what? We got on so well and soon arranged a date. I fixed my hair one more time and walked over to him. Hello, you. <gasps> Patrick? Surprise, my bae. I'm your perfect mystery partner. Patrick, I swear to God. How do you feel? Angry much, huh? Then now you know how my poor heart felt when you broke it to pieces. <laughs> I was fuming, but Patrick kept up his annoying grin. So you're that starving for love? All right, I know your ideal type way too well. Let me find you a guy. You know, attractive boys tend to hang out in a herd. We'll see. You know, being handsome is only one thing on my list. The first candidate was this guy called Beavis, the basketball team captain. 
We started talking, and it went well enough for him to invite me to go watch his game. He even winked at me before he scored a perfect three-pointer. All the jealous glances turned to me. Looks like Patrick really found me a good deal. At first, this was kind of cool. But soon all of the love letters and gifts Beavis received got kind of grating. Worst of all, he accepted them all. He didn't seem to be faithful at all. Also, his grades really sucked, and he was always so sweaty. This first candidate is out. Next was Daniel, a cute genius who liked to invent things. I really love how passionate he looks when he's working on something. He's so talented. But he always showed up late to our date with the excuse there was some machine malfunction. His clothes were always stained with grease, and all he talked about was research. Oh, actually, I have zero idea what you're on about. You're so robotic. I went home and already saw Patrick making himself at home in our living room. He must have heard the news. So, sporty boy has too many fangirls. No good. Mechanic boy is too busy. No good. Then maybe a rich boy with a lot of free time could treat you like a princess. Patrick introduced me to this guy called Eric, the school rich kid who showered me with lavish gifts. That was nice, but then his clinginess felt suffocating. He always seemed to be there, and he wouldn't quit calling and texting me. He also spent longer than I did getting ready. No thanks. Why? You're too clingy. If you have too much time on your hands, then why don't you go do something useful? What? I only cling on to you because I care. But I guess I was just wasting my time on useless things because you're just a stubborn, spoiled girl that finds fault in everything and doesn't appreciate other people's feelings. No one's ever spoken to me like that before. Useless? Stubborn? Spoiled? Eric's words were still echoing in my head as I walked home. Then I saw Patrick approaching. What's up? Who got you mad this time? Is it Eric? His downside is being too rich, isn't he? Not Eric, it's you. You deliberately set me up with those weirdos, didn't you? What are you saying? I only chose the guys that suit you best. No, they don't. I don't think you really understand me at all. Oh, really? How well do you understand me then? If you're that confident, then go find me an ideal girlfriend. Fine, maybe you'll quit bugging me if you're taken. Hmm, turns out trying to find a girlfriend for Patrick was trickier than I thought. He's so friendly with everyone, I actually have no idea what his type is. Whatever, he made no effort to find me a nice guy anyway, so I'll just return the favor. Nope, nope, nope. Oh, Nina, I know her. A scandalous hot girl who always goes overboard on the wax statue makeup. I'm pretty sure she likes Patrick, as she's always cheering him from the sidelines during his games. Patrick, let's see what fun date you can have with this girl. The next day, I walked straight up to Nina and asked her if she wanted to go on a date with Patrick. She looked kind of surprised, but then after thinking it over, she agreed. They met at a cafe, and after I introduced them to each other, I sat at a nearby table and observed. I expected things between them to be super awkward, but surprisingly, they seemed to get along quite well. I couldn't hear what they were saying, but they kept bursting out laughing. They acted like they'd known each other for ages. Patrick and Nina bid farewell, and as soon as Nina walked away, I jumped out and asked, How can you have fun chatting with Nina all night? Don't you see her laughing out loud? That's not very ladylike. So she's fun. Everyone has flaws, though I don't even think it's a flaw. It's cute. Fine, let's see how long you two can have fun. But in the following days, I still saw Patrick with Nina. Then at school, I overheard Nina talking to her friends. Tonight? No wonder you've been looking so happy all day. Of course, it's going to be a big confession. Huh? They've only been dating for five minutes. I wonder why Patrick liked Nina that much. So I decided to stalk them. I followed them to this posh restaurant. Ugh, so humiliating. Who would have thought that Perfect Page would do something like this? But there's no way back now. They spoke for a bit, then Patrick went to answer a phone call. I thought he was going to plan his confession or something. But then to my surprise, a man swooped in and sat down with his arm around Nina. That's Beavis. What? How could they be so shameless? I quickly ran to find Patrick, who was chilling in a corner, so I quickly pulled him back to the table. Look, you're being cheated on. Cheated on? What do you mean? The girl who's been clinging on to you for days has been flirting with your teammate. Stop playing dumb, please. Nina is just my friend. She likes Beavis, not me. Nina clearly likes you. She follows you to every game. How could she switch to Beavis out of nowhere? You should defend me, not a stranger like her. Did you forget Patrick and I are teammates? Nina was actually there for me. I agreed to meet Patrick just because I wanted to ask him to talk to Beavis for me. Sorry for misleading you. <laughs> What's with a bulldog's frown? We just successfully match made a couple. Let's go give the lovebirds some private space. I guess you'll have to find me another girl. Don't act like we're close. 
don't want a flippant and heartless friend like you. You're the heartless one. You're making a mess with your ridiculous standards and expect others to follow all of that, then act like a victim? Don't you see how Patrick is the real casualty here? He tended to your absurd needs, even helped you get a boyfriend, yet all you do is treat him like garbage. Selfish Paige, you're not as perfect as you think. What? What do you know? You're just a plastic girl after all. Yeah, I might be plastic, but at least I realize what my flaws are to try to fix them. Unlike you, you call yourself a diamond when actually you're just a silly pebble. Was this really what people thought of me? I couldn't believe anyone would ever describe me with such ugly words. <laughs> I ran home and shut myself away in my room. It made me so distraught knowing that other people thought I was bad like that. Mom came into my room to check on me and I ended up blurting everything to her. How everyone seemed to hate me now. How I might be alone for the rest of my life without finding my perfect other half and having a happy ending like mom and dad. Sweetie, everyone has flaws. I do and so does your father. I can have quite the temper, but your dad always knows what to say and do to calm me down. While he is terrible at being romantic, so I have to give him hints now and then. Point is, we accept and love each other, flaws and all. That's the secret to a long and happy marriage. Talking to mom really helped me understand that no one is perfect, and therefore my standards are unreasonable. I had some apologizing to do. I texted Beavis, Daniel, Eric, and Nina. Beavis replied straight away, telling me he was sorry too for what he said, but it came from a good place, and he's sure that I was better than that because he trusts Patrick's eye for people. Now there was just one last apology for me to make, and I needed to do this one in person. Oh, looks like he already found me. Hey, shoddy. Are you looking for me? The most handsome guy in town. Please stop. I came to talk to you about something serious. Uh, <laughs> I came to see you too. Trust me, I didn't match you with those silly guys on purpose. In no way do I want to hurt you. Because, because I like you, Paige. For real. Since when? I, I just thought we were just good friends. Since we started dating. At first, I just went along with it, but gradually I found myself having real feelings for you. I'm so sorry for causing you trouble. Being around you makes my head fuzzy. I always crack jokes just because I want to make you smile, but turns out you don't feel the same. I will try to keep it down from now on. No, I'm sorry too. You don't have to change anything for me. It's the real you after all. I've truly learned it now. Nobody's perfect, and it's the way people complete each other's imperfections with their personality differences that tighten the relationships. And maybe being perfect is my imperfection. So now you have my permission to offset it with your annoying unseriousness. So where were we as a couple? <laughs> oh right, Paige's vomit. Shall we go home and make that signature drink again? <laughs> Just kidding. I was at the fish market, busy selling some crabs to a customer, when I turned around and saw this guy stealing our fish. He quickly ran away. I grabbed a stone, aiming it at the thief. But suddenly, a guy appeared and it hit him instead. Hey, what was that? Let go of me! Shouldn't you at least apologize? I looked over and the thief was nowhere to be found. The thief's escaped! You should apologize! But the guy just frowned and huffed off. Hi, I'm Serena, and I was brought up here, in this picturesque fishing town. When I was little, I lost mom and dad to the sea, so grandma raised me. We couldn't afford school for me. Instead, I helped grandma sell fish at the market to make ends meet. But things weren't always easy. Serena, you all right? Yes, I just wish people wouldn't steal. I know. Hopefully it was an extra stinky fish that will give them a tummy ache. That's Edward, my best friend since childhood. Edward's parents are also fishermen, so we naturally bond together and grew up inseparable. Later, Edward and I were busy closing when I heard murmurs and saw Mr. Elbridge, the fishing enforcement officer. Anyone caught poaching striped bass will be given a hefty fine. What? You gotta be kidding me. Sir, it's only considered poaching if they were caught out of season, which they're not. Oh, really? Do you have the legal documentation to overpower my decision? Nope. Thought as much. He's obviously abusing his power. At home, I told Grandma everything that had happened at the fish market. I know it's not fair, sweetie, but maybe one day you could study, become an amazing lawyer, and help the local fishermen. I want to help. I can tutor you if you'd like. That's brilliant. Since then, Edward stayed true to his word and tutored me. He was smart, kind, and so patient in explaining things to me. Time flies, and by the time I turned 13, I had the biggest crush on Edward, but I had no clue how he felt about me. I'll wash up. In the future, I'll always share the housework with you. What does he mean by that? Does he also have feelings for me? The next day, when Edward and I were having ice cream, 
Some kids came in and started making fun of me. Do you know eating too much ice cream makes you fat? Oh, of course you don't, because you don't go to school. Ha <laughs> ha. She doesn't need to. She's still far smarter than you'll ever be. Why did you always stick up for me? Is it because you think of me as a... as a... As a little sister? I need to stop daydreaming. He doesn't have those kinds of feelings for me. Then, when I turned 17, something terrible happened. Grandma felt so sick that she passed away. At the funeral, I felt so alone with all the adults around, and Edward was nowhere to be seen. When everything was settled, Uncle Leon said he'd take me to live with his family in the city. I had to tell Edward, but when I got to his house, it was all locked up. So I quickly slid a note with my uncle's address under his door, then left for the city. As soon as we walked into the mansion, and Clara and Rachel were already there, frowning. Ugh, can you smell rotting fish? Ew, uh, get yourself some perfume, please. Enough! You will make Serena feel welcome here. Please prepare a nice room and everything Serena needs. Uh-oh, not a good start. But then Uncle Leon had to go away for a business trip and asked Aunt Clara to find me a tutor as he was afraid going to school might be a shock for me. I was so excited to finally study and pursue my lawyer dream. However, all the tutors Aunt Clara found were terrible. I actually had to teach them simple sums. Meanwhile, Aunt Clara showered me with errands to run. Suddenly, I saw a blur of a dog and boy and... Smash! You idiot! How am I meant to cycle home with an injured knee? You're hearing this, Rex? How is she gonna cycle back home? S sorry I'll take you home. I accepted his offer, mainly because I didn't exactly have much choice. What's your number? Well, that was quick. Stop daydreaming. I need it in case I decide to sue you. The guy, Henry, finally quit fooling around and gave me his number. When we got to the mansion, I caught sight of a familiar figure. Edward! I limped over and looped my arms around him. Who are you? Before I could respond, Henry shrugged his shoulders, then left. Edward then told me all about the tragic events that had happened to him. My father made a bad decision to go dynamite fishing. The Coast Guard caught him, but as he tried to run away, his boat smashed into a reef. We needed to move to the city for his treatment. Luckily, I got a scholarship into college here, so I can study and also care for Dad. I'm so sorry it's taken me this long to find you. That's okay, I understand. It all sounds terrible. What about you? So you live in that big mansion now? Is that guy your boyfriend? Henry? Oh, no, no. He's just... Good, because, well, I wanted to tell you that I missed you, and I love you, Serena. B but you said I'm just a sister to you. I was 13. I didn't understand my feelings back then, but I do now. Serena, not having you by my side felt so empty. Will you be my girlfriend? We started dating, and having Edward by my side felt so great. I was complaining about my terrible tutors when Edward suggested he become my tutor instead. That's a great idea. You'll need to prepare an atrocious CV for my aunt to hire you. And it worked. I don't expect you to get very far with this one. She is rather dumb. What's the deal with you two? She doesn't like having me here. Halfway through the lesson, Edward got a call from the hospital asking him to pay his dad's bills ASAP before his condition worsened. I was comforting him when Rachel barged in. Serena, go get me some ice. Oh, hello there. Get out! Who's that? Rachel, my cousin. Edward seemed distracted after that. I guess he was upset about his dad. He told me to continue with my worksheet and went to the bathroom. I finished the work, but Edward still hadn't returned. Was he lost in this massive house or something? I went to look for him and was shocked to see him and Rachel happily laughing together. Hi, Serena. I was just getting some water. I ignored Edward and continued studying by myself. Are you jealous? I was just being polite. Darn it, he knew I couldn't be mad at him when he smiled at me like that. But as we continued studying, I couldn't fully shake away my uneasy feeling. But the next day, I was waiting to study with Edward when Edward won't be coming today. What? I asked her why, but she just walked off. As she left, I heard her ask the maid to bring fruits to Rachel and her new tutor. Huh? Since when did Rachel have a tutor? Sensing something was up, I sneaked over to Rachel's room and spotted... Edward? Serena, what are you doing over here? Oh, is stalking your new hobby now? I looked at Edward, but he just sat still, so I ran off with blurry eyes and an aching heart. Edward tried to call me, but I just ignored it. That night, he texted me and insisted on waiting for me. I wanted to hear him out, but I was still so angry at him. Serena, please... Your aunt told me I couldn't tutor you anymore and asked me to be Rachel's tutor instead. I need the money for my dad's treatment. I can't turn this amount of money down. Ugh, my aunt was such a witch! 
I'm so sorry. I would much rather be tutoring you. You're the only girl for me, but I can't lose this job. So let's keep our relationship a secret, okay? This was no big deal, right? It was me he wanted, not Rachel. Edward's birthday soon arrived, and we have a date at this restaurant today. I was excited when my phone buzzed. Sorry, babe. Something's come up. Can't make it. X. It must have been something super important for him to cancel like that. But on my way home, I passed another restaurant and couldn't believe my eyes. Edward and Rachel were sitting together. Rage swarmed over me, and before I could stop myself, I charged in there. Edward, how could you? Jeez, what's up with you? He's not even your tutor anymore. Ask him how long he's known me for. Uh, I was just your tutor, that's all. I couldn't believe this, so I stormed off. I felt like such a fool for ever believing his lies. While running in tears, I bumped straight into Henry. You look like you just got dumped. <laughs> it was the straw that broke the camel's back, so I started crying louder. It's not me. <laughs> I didn't do anything. Please stop crying. Anything you want. Anything. Uh, how about the aquarium? It turns out the aquarium was just what I needed. Watching the fish was so relaxing, and Henry was surprisingly a lot of fun to be around. Your parents must be super easygoing to put up with you. Nope. My lawyer mom is way opposite. Oh, wow. That's cool. It's my dream to be a lawyer. Is that so? My school's interviewing for a law foundation course. You should apply. A law foundation course, huh? Should I give it a try? I arrived home feeling better, but and Clara wouldn't leave me alone with her usual mocking routines. You spoiled ingrate! Soon you'll be 18 and I can rid my hands of you! I had enough! So I decided to apply for the foundation program Henry mentioned. It was time to focus on my dream without any further distractions. I studied hard and went to the library for materials. Henry offered to help, and even though I still found him childish sometimes, he was actually quite smart and knew loads about the law. One time, Henry invited me to come watch his debate team. Only, when I showed up and spoke to Henry, I saw Edward walk in. My dad's ill, yet here you are, with him? Serena can go where she pleases. It's okay, Henry. I got it. Rachel's just my friend. I love you, not her. I just need to earn enough money. Then I'll end this mess with Rachel for good. What he did was still hard to accept, but he was in a tough situation. I would be a terrible girlfriend if I didn't support him, right? Despite all this drama, I'd been studying hard, and now it was time for my interview. Only, on my way there, I saw a woman yelling at two students. Watch where you're going, you idiots! Excuse me, but this is a pedestrian crossing, hence the driver's fault for not stopping. How dare you speak the law to me, you little girl! Do you know who I am? But as everyone started buzzing, she had no choice but to drive off. <sighs> what happened? I explained it to him and pointed at the woman's car. He didn't say anything, but seemed quite surprised. We then went to the interview, but when I told the assistant my name, she smiled and said, You don't need to draw a number. Mrs. Shodden was impressed with your profile, so she wishes to interview you herself. It's best you follow the right procedure. I was a bit confused, but Henry knew better than me. Anyway, I had my interview with someone else, and I passed. Yay! Since then, I studied hard, and Henry helped me a lot. On my first oral exam, he even came along to encourage me. Only, as soon as I stepped into the room, I saw that rude woman standing there. Hang on, she's the judge! Nerves wriggled at me, but I kept calm and nailed the exam. But afterward, she charged over to me. Don't expect a pass from me, you manipulative girl, seducing my son to get into this college. Huh? Her son? Who? Mom, you can't do that. The exam's recorded. They'll see you're just being prejudiced. I insist you cut ties with a schemer at once. She humiliated me in front of a crowd and tried to smudge my impeccable reputation. No, she didn't. She was just telling the truth. Oh, and that day, I purposely called her in for an interview, but turned out you intervened. And ever since then, this snake was following you everywhere. So end it at once or leave. So this woman is Miss Shodden? And worse still, she's Henry's mom? Suddenly, Henry grabbed my hand and led me out of there. How dare you! You're ungrateful and spoiled! I only adopted you so I had someone to look after me in my old age. But you know what? You'll never be my son! Don't forget to take your meds twice a day. Seeing him talk back to his mother just to defend me, I couldn't help but ask, Henry, why did you help me so much? It's because mom was in the wrong, and seeing you getting pushed around hurts me a lot. Why, Henry? Because I like you a lot. Let me be there for you. Um, Henry, your mom shouldn't have spoken to you like that, but she was only angry because she cares about you. You should talk to her. I really hope things will turn out fine between them. 
Henry dropped me home, and now all I could think about was his love confession. To be honest, I do have feelings for Henry, but what about Edward? What about our years spent together? Suddenly, I got a text from Edward, asking to meet up. I guess it was time to sort this out. While waiting for Edward to order ice cream, I got a message from Henry, saying he was coming to my place for some great news. I asked him to come pick me up instead. This reminds me of our fishing village in summer and getting ice creams at the end of a sweltering day. I love you, Serena. I always cherish our memories together every day. Edward, actually, this isn't working. I think we should stop seeing each other. W what Why? I soon realized that something was wrong with our relationship. I just didn't have the courage to face it. We had a special friendship that I cherished and nurtured, but now I think it's time for me to accept the truth that we're not meant for each other. Bye, Edward. I wish you the best with Rachel. As I stepped out of there, I saw Henry waiting for me and I instantly felt better. I made up with my mom. She apologized for what she said in her temper and told me that I would always be her real son. Henry, that's brilliant news! Right then, I got a message from Miss Shodden. Serena, I apologized for my behavior. I am most pleased Henry is getting to know such a righteous lawyer in the making. It looks like everything's falling into place. I arrived home, not expecting to see Rachel in a fit of tears. Mom, make her leave! This is all her fault! How dare you bewitch Edward! He's quit tutoring Rachel and now my poor Rachel is distraught! I will keep on hiring you awful tutors and see how long it takes until you break. Ahem, <laughs> is that so? So Uncle Leon stopped Rachel's allowance and took Aunt Clara's credit cards off her. He also made them apologize to me. I told him about my foundation placement and he was so happy for me and offered to rent me an apartment near the college. It's time to live my dream. Now I just had one thing left to do. Take Henry to visit my hometown with me. This place looks familiar to me. <gasps> I know, I think I came here as a child. Yes, this weird little girl threw a stone at me and then got mad. I suddenly realized Henry was that tourist guy I met when I was 10. Yep, that would be me. Henry seemed surprised, then suddenly pulled me in. I guess some things are just meant to be.